It's the first episode of Season 3, and David is joined by Dan McCoy to talk about some of their favorite Zelda commercials. And welcome to another Zelda podcast. I am David Geisler, host of the show, here with Dan McCoy. Dan, how are you? Hi, guys. Thanks for having me back. I'm super excited about it. I know, and we were sitting right here in the last episode that you were on. I almost honestly thought about wearing the exact same thing, (laughs) um, but I didn't want people to think I'm like a homeless person, so who just pulled (laughs) up off the street. Oh, like you just have the same clothes? Yeah, someone needs to get him new clothes. I see. No, you have actually kind of a cool shirt on today. You have um, the Ghostbusters car chasing Pac-Man ghosts. And a, and a nice little sweater. Yeah. I have a sweater, too, but it's not on yet. Well, we didn't want to be around. matching sweaters. You know, that's a little too much. So, Two guys with glasses wearing cardigans and graphic tees. It's like that is like the stereotype podcast situation. I got to be honest. Yeah, I'm not mad about it, though. <laughs> it's a good look. We rock it well. So, Dan, um, I'm so happy to be here with you. It has been season three mm-hmm. getting started. Very it's going to be a very interesting season, a very exciting season. We're going to be having oh, yeah. a lot of voices on this season. It has, I don't mind saying that it's been a stressful uh, four weeks or so, kind of figuring out what season three would be. Sure, sure, sure. And I am so appreciative of all of our listeners' support and all of that, even though if this is the first episode of this new, they might be like, what are you talking about? But we've had a lot of people, actually a lot of people reaching out on social saying, when is season three coming? And I've been I've been kind of dispensing the story a little bit to those people, mm-hmm. and there's been a lot of excitement, a lot of a lot of anticipation. The social's been building, yep, and it just warms my heart. It makes me very happy. And um, well, I'm honored to be part of episode one. Episode one, just starting it and getting it going. Indeed. So, what are we talking about today? So, this is an idea that we had a while ago, uh, back when I was uh, in last season. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were trying to figure out what topics, and the one thing that I always liked was the oh you uh, did bring this up last yeah. year I kind of forgot yeah this was like like we like put it in the back shelf but this is our favorites um, TV commercials yeah. uh, for the Legend of Zelda video games yeah. uh, coming out so, in fact I now recall you said this to me about a year ago and I was like well we can't do it because it would have to be a video yeah episode. yeah exactly and so then we just and this time around I thought let's do an experiment and let's really we do put these videos out uh, our episodes out on YouTube sure but I usually just do like a little you know Breath of the Wild landscape video mm-hmm. Um, Because a lot of times I think people probably just minimize it and listen. Yeah, or in the car, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then we have the normal podcast feed, which is audio only. So this is how I think I'm going to do this. I'm just talking about this on the show right now. I was considering putting a video version out on our podcast feed, but that might get a little weird. I think we're going to have an audio only. The audio we are recording right now will go on to the the Google Play, the iTunes, or, you know, whatever it is, Apple Podcasts these days. Um, And that'll be audio only. We are going to be watching these commercials in the show today. So we do, for, just for the for people who are listening in the car, so to speak, I think we'll have to speak to those commercials a little bit, to describe them a oh, little bit Oh, don't worry. These go. commercials are very, <laughs> very easily spoken to. They, I, I did like a deep dive and like we each uh, did our own research. Um, but these commercials are like go from the dark to the weird to the funny to the like amazing to the emotional yeah. like there is a massive range of advertising uh, that has taken over for these. So I'm, I'm super excited about um, talking about the ones that I brought. So, yes. And so then what we'll do is we'll, the video version of this, okay. I've decided I'm not going to put it out on our XML because then people will be getting two files and I just want to keep it nice and clean over one there. One file. It's all you yeah, need. One file. But our YouTube version will be, it's us. We're looking at the camera right now. We have a camera in the studio in my apartment here that we are talking to. Um, and so if you are listening to this on on Apple Podcasts or Google Play or whatever right now, you're kind of interested in having this be the video version and you have the ability to go to our YouTube page, I'm going to put a link in the show notes to go straight to this file. But also you can find us just at youtube.com slash another Zelda podcast. And if you're inclined to watch this one and, and watch us watch these commercials, please do. Otherwise, keep on listening. Because really, you need to see some of these commercials. Like if, <laughs> if, you, if you don't know, like some of them, and I've said it before, they're pretty bonkers and i'm very excited about introducing some of them to you so dan you did a lot of the heavy lifting here you you took you went down a youtube hole and found a lot of these commercials i'm familiar with some of them okay but i want to give you all the credit here because we have a list of commercials that we're going to go through and yes this is nine nine or something like that i'm framing this as a favorites episode sure and and usually in a favorites episode you know kate and i would just kind of grab whatever we wanted maybe Mm -hmm. in our favorites npc maybe i'd have five or ten and maybe she'd have five or ten and so 
this is this is going to be framed in that way. Okay. We can do them in any order you like, but first, I want to do a little bit of listener feedback. Absolutely. Favorite part of the show right now. So we get we get a lot of feedback about people enjoying the listener feedback on the top of the episodes. Okay. I do think we kind of hit a wall at, in the season two finale. It took Kate and I about a half an hour to get through all of the listener feedback. Just so much positivity. It's a good problem to have. It's... I love this relationship we have with our listeners and I love celebrating that and and having that conversation go back and forth. We are getting to a point now, I think we're hitting critical mass where there's so much feedback that I don't know if we can really read every single thing. Okay. There's enough going on on Discord and we get we get Instagram comments and, and YouTube comments and Twitter and it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure and a treat and a gift to have that feedback. I do think what we're going to do for season three, I'm going to make a little change. You might recall in season two, we did do a listener feedback episode. I do recall. Yeah. Um... I think I'm only going to pepper in a couple listener feedbacks each episode, kind of like the early days of season one, where maybe okay. we'd only have three or four, maybe five things. We're not going to spend so much time on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going to actually do two listener feedback episodes throughout season three, where we can spend a good hour and a half, two hours of really pulling out some that really like touched us and that we could talk about. Brilliant. Cool. I, I don't know who's going to be on those episodes with me yet. Maybe it'll be, maybe we could do it as a round table. It's a little off our format. I don't want to stray too much from our normal format this season, sure. but we do have an opportunity to try some new things as well. Um, I emailed Joaquin Phoenix to see if he wanted to be on the show. Oh, yeah, I'm hoping it's just at joaquinphoenix at gmail.com. Um, so <laughs> yeah, we'll sure see what is. happens. He yeah. hasn't responded. No? Um, no, but we'll no. see. Is he going to come in character as Joker? or? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> everything's in the air at this Pardon point. So. I am also on day six of a cold, so I'm feeling great, but I'm, I'm a little congested. I might cough a little bit. So deal with that, Dan. Oh, wow. So now you're happy this is kind of a saliva thing. <laughs> So I mean, you, mean the, you said the pop it was filter? You, yeah. You said it was no, but now that microphone is super happy. So I'm not completely wrong. Let's do some listening. Feedback. Okay. <laughs> um, um, this is a really sweet one we got on on Twitter, and I have a strange note scribbled on there. I don't know what that means, but oh, Instagram, Instagram. That's what it is. Insta. I N S T A. Look at that handwriting. Doesn't even look like handwriting. I N S T A. You should have been a doctor. Um, what appears to be based on the graphic here is perhaps a, a, a younger gal who listens to the show. It's, it's, it's uh, underscore kitty dot T underscore priv. And she said, I'm assuming based on the icon, she said, I've been listening to you got your guys podcast for a couple of months now, mostly when I'm running or doing chores. And another Zelda podcast is definitely my favorite podcast. Hey, you guys deserve a lot more subscribers. Okay, fair enough. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Okay. Um, and I love that you start that at the start of your videos, you read all your viewers' comments hey. and actually include your viewers in the video. P.S. My first Zelda game I played was Ocarina of Time when I was six. And since then, I've been playing all of the Zelda games I can. Keep Preach. up the great job. Thank you so much, T underscore priv. That was a real treat. Ocarina of Time was my first one, too. Yeah, I think it was, right? Um, it's one oh, of the only ones I've played, but... Uh, a Christian underscore nihilist or nihilist over for season two, episode 21 on YouTube. We have two comments here that I'll read real quick. Said, uh, listening to this and loved it. This was our episode of um, favorite side quests in Twilight Princess. Favorite side quests in Twilight, a very specific topic. That was the same. I know. Well, see, I learned a little trick in season two. What's the trick? Instead of doing a favorite side quest episode, do a favorite side quest of a particular game episode. Ah. And then you can you are given the opportunity to then also do a Wind Waker yeah. one and a Skyward Sword one, and well, it gives if, us more to talk about. To yeah. be honest, and if people are fans of a specific game more than others, yeah. I mean, they're a lot more like. You're actual. right. It's not just a way to stretch it out. It's a really a way to be able to focus more yeah. instead of just favorite side quests, and then and then it's like, oh, but you missed this, you missed this. Yeah. We get to like d- dive in a little deeper, and your brain doesn't have to jump around from game to game. You get to just deep dive on that one. Yeah, yeah. it's true. It's true. So over here, uh, Christian Christian said, listening to this and loved it. Haven't played t- Twilight Princess in a long time. Was also going to say that if you guys ever have are ever in a crunch to play a game and don't want to put the money down, I'm always down to lend a game oh, if hey. I have it. Oh my gosh! I think David said he's been meaning to try Link's Awakening for the Switch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dan was just teasing me about that the other day. He has been saying he's going to buy a Switch <laughs> every <laughs> single day for the past I think like a year, <laughs> six to eight months. I think I'm going to do it today. I think I got the money. I'm just going to do it today. Where's the Switch at, David? I don't have it yet. And there he is. I'm almost done with with. I'm almost done, and with four little kids, I probably won't play much uh, more after beating it. 
keep up the good work. Christian, that is a, that is a sweet, sweet sentiment. Oh. We even had a listener say like, oh, you could borrow my 3DS to play uh, a link uh, link between worlds and mm-hmm, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm lucky enough that I finally found one and I was able to purchase one. I think we, I'm looking forward to those reviews. This is just, this just touch, touches my heart. It's, it's amazing that we have listeners that are willing to do this kind of stuff. Um, I will buy a Switch. I can't wait to play the Link Awakening remix, remake. Um, I don't. I don't see it happening. Well, I'm good. Well, I tell you what. The, do you know when it'll happen? No matter what, is Breath of the Wild two. Oh, okay, that's obviously. fair. That's but fair. the truth is, I've been in like, five years. Budgeting. <laughs> so what happens is, you know, it's, it's three hundred bucks or whatever, and sure. it's the kind of thing where like every couple paychecks, you're like, oh, I have a little bit of discretionary mm-hmm. income. I'm going to spend it on the Switch. But then, um, you know, the car needs a new battery. Uh, or, okay. uh, you know, stuff happens yep. and it's just it, enough where you're like, oh, it whittles away enough of it to where you can't put it's it It's like, oh, in. I could squeeze, but also I should live responsibly. Yeah. And and there hasn't been, Link's Awakening, I can't wait to play it. Cadence of Hyrule, can't wait to play it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's there. It's imminent. It's imminent. You just got to go for it. Want, wandering Photo Fae uh, on Your the same episode. Your car doesn't need a battery. My car doesn't need a battery. Hey man, it's winter. It's cold out there, and it's like five degrees out there. Do you see? Oh, neither of our watches turned on. I know, we put I them on like, fear ah, mode. I was like hoping you did something. You have so. to touch it. Uh, well, it's thirty out there, so it's a hot. We have a heat, heat wave here in in uh, <laughs> that Illinois. thirty degree heat wave coming in in Chicago. We are doing this episode from my apartment in Chicago right now, and it's uh, boy, I'm enjoying this city again. Oh, this city's great. I've been back I'm almost seven months now, actually. I moved up here from St. Louis, so compared to St. Louis, this is a godsend of a city. I mean, speak. You know, since we're talking about Chicago a little bit, I am going to be actively this season. I've talked about this a little bit on social. Um, I might pull back on going to conventions a little bit this season. Okay. And we had a really great time at Midwest Gaming Classic and at the Video Game Summit. We might still have to go to Video Game Summit just because they're such close friends. Oh yeah. Literally, I feel friends with with that group, but. Um, um, I think since now we have a little bit of a home base here mm-hmm. in Chicago, and it's, and I mean, we still have like Shane and up in Milwaukee and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I want to focus more on meetups this season. Let's do it and peppering in, like literally putting a page on our website of planned meetups at different yeah. perhaps bars or different places. I was gonna say, in Chicago has so many amazing just meetup places. There's yeah. breweries, there's libraries, there's like right. everywhere. So I think that's going to be my real focus this season. Love uh, it. Find ways for people to be able to do that because love we, it, love we it, have love. a lot of people in Chicago that listen to us, which is really cool. Wandering Photo Fay says, uh, I wanted to say that I've been enjoying all your podcasts. I started listening on the way, pardon me, just got a little message. I started listening on the way to work and working backward. Oh, interesting. One of the things I wanted to say is, have you seen the fashion from Triforce Heroes? I have the Art and Artifacts book, and they all have many different costumes. I think I read this on the season two finale. But that's very sweet, yeah. Um, so Triforce Heroes is a 3DS game where you, three people play at the same time. It's very similar to How does that the, work? Well, you, it's co-op. You're all out there running around together, and you have your own screens because you're playing on your own devices, and they Wi-Fi to each other. Oh, okay. I never How, had a 3DS, so I didn't know it had like the Wi-Fi stuff. We might have to get a couple more to play this. Um I'm just seeing real quick. I am. <laughs> Maybe we'll leave listener con- listener feedback to there. We have a lot more, but I think I'm accidentally diving into what we did in the end of mm-hmm. season two. So I think we'll leave it at that sure. for now. Um, but thank you so much. You can always find us on Twitter and Instagram. On Instagram, it's Another Zelda Podcast. On Twitter, it's Another Zelda Pod. Not enough characters in that handle. And um, you can find you can find a lot of stuff on our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, where we also people can just leave comments right on our posts. Mm-hmm. Where you can read our blogs and all that kind of stuff. Dan, yes, as you can see me like squirming because I'm just so excited about getting into these. I know I'm ready. I'm this is I'm a little nervous as the as a producer. I'm nervous how we might have to if we have any tech difficulties down here okay. or have to cue something up. Full disclosure to we, I, I usually never really edit these episodes. Sure, but I might be editing just for time. Like yeah. if we have downtime for a minute or two, waiting for something to load, I'll probably edit that out. I just want to be honest with our listeners. I want to say I think I loaded them all up. I think it's just go to the tab, hit play. I, hopefully, there's no ads or anything. But well, uh, we should be we should be able to do this pretty quickly. So let's um, let's talk about how um, I think by the end of this episode, we're going to be able to kind of talk about how ads have changed over the years. These days, oh, yeah. a video game ad is really just a YouTube video. Oh yeah. It's a YouTube trailer that everybody watches, but pre internet, or at least before like YouTube. So before 10 years ago yep. or the nineties or the eighties and obviously and 90s even the early two thousands. Yep. The, the way that that was given was 30 second TV spots. Yep. 
Yep, yep, yep. And so there's a lot of, you know, these days a trailer mostly shows gameplay, stuff like that. You know, there's, I think there's a, there's a, our culture, the way we take in this information these days is a bit more of, it's a post E3 kind of experience. Mm -hmm. That's what people are used to, basically getting trailers delivered to them. So what was, what, what difference to, to kick this off, what was the, I know you went down a deep hole and found many, many ads from the 90s and 80s and and the rest. What was your first takeaway? Um, finding some of these commercials. I mean, just in just how dated things are. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you watch some of these from the like '80s and '90s, and to us now, they're just so tacky and like yeah. almost kind of cringy. And you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't even believe. Like there was no way that would fly now. Um, but back then, if you can remember who you were and your mindset, like that was cool. Like you'd see, and some of these are prime examples of this. Yeah. Um, also, I was gonna say that. Nowadays, I think a lot of video game trailers don't have a lot of gameplay. Yes, and I think, you know, it's interesting because in the 90s, the, and it's some of it is sensitivities. Yeah. I know there's one of these. I think you spoke to me a little. I, a lot of these I haven't seen. Some of them I probably have. Um, one of them said something really, by today's standards, really inappropriate where it was like, save oh. the girl, don't play like one or yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's one of them that's on there because Ugh. it's, and we'll get there, but I have, I have a little... A little, mm-hmm. a little bit to say because they did two yeah. of that kind of brand of those advertisements, and one's this way, and one's very much like different. I don't. I think gaming culture was different in the '90s, and oh, certainly yeah. in the '80s, and all the rest. Um, and then, secondly, though, there's also just like what was something that was cool in the '90s? Oh yeah, in the age of I don't know, you know, Smash Mouth and like grossness. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, those two are not exclusively connected, but I'm just saying, like, it's kind of. Um, 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 no offense to Smash Mouth. You know, like, this, there's this infamous trailer for um, Mario World 2 for the Super Nintendo, and it was just like the most misfired um, commercial ever. Okay. It, it was, you know, Super Mario World 2, Yoshi's Island is, is actually a really competently, brilliantly made game. And is that where you throw the eggs? Yeah, throw the eggs. It's the first one where you throw the eggs. And that annoying baby Mario cry that's still in my head. I don't even hear it anymore. I'm so good at that game. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Touch, uh, so, touch fuzzy, get dizzy. I remember that episode. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, that episode, that's funny. Yeah, but that level. Uh, anyway, anyway, so it's like this grossly inappropriate commercial where a guy just keeps eating and he physically explodes onto guests in a restaurant, like guts and bile and everything. Okay. It's horribly... I, I think offensive and gross, and I don't think it would ever be let go today. But it was also in this, like, play it loud. Yep. Things need to be gross. Extreme we need a lot of, like, too. snot humor. Yeah. It needs to be extreme. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Earthworm Jim's literally, like, throwing out snot things. Yep. And this is, like, kind of what the 90s was a little well, bit. Well, Boogerman was, right? a, like, a game that mm-hmm. he just... We were kind of coming off the even, like, the little bit of the Nickelodeon, like, slime. the slime stuff from the late yep, 80s yep, and yep. The early 90s. And so I feel like some of these Gak. trailers might... Mm-hmm be informed by that a little bit so yeah. i think we're going to be exploring two things yeah how culture changes and what was cool when yeah yeah and so i, I think i got a good range I, I got some old i got some mids i got some some newer ones ah. shall we say that um, might be trailers or maybe still tv spots um i i don't think i've actually watched tv in quite a while <laughs> so i don't even know what's on tv I anymore I um <laughs> All of all of my advertisement experience comes from watching uh, it, in St. Louis. It was Channel Eleven, the WB, the Batman Superman Adventures. Okay, I would get home, watch that hour, and if you could put anything in those commercials, I'd want it. Like that was <laughs> that I was an open book, like just shovel in as much advertising during that hour as yeah. possible. Yeah, all interesting. Right. Let's do this. You're gonna so yeah. Okay, we're gonna reach forward. Start. We're gonna look down at this thing. Uh, Here, let's. I'm going to start out with one of the, I think, most classic okay. crazy ones. Yeah. Um, this is when I just typed in into the uh, search engine. This one was the one that popped up first. Okay. And so this is the Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past SNES Japanese commercial. Yeah. I see right here there's a Super Famicom logo up. So have you seen this one? Well, I'm hoping this is the one where a gal plays Link and they all like Zel- they all rap and dance and stuff like that. Uh, so, With the big Ganon puppet yeah. at the end? Oh, yeah. Oh, this oh, is it. Oh, this is it. This one's wonderful. So here we go. It starts out really, really nice. Yeah. Yep. And this then... This is it. Mm, so cool. But it is kind of neat that the characters are represented well. Oh, yeah. And that's... And not only that, the hair, like the uh, all that stuff in here is just fantastic. 
I, I like I literally watched this one like I no joke like 14 times in a row <laughs> because there's just something to stare at every single time. Two skeletons. Mm-hmm. Oh, the rare elusive dark-haired Zelda. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks so cool. His sword was glowing. Look at that firewall. The whiz rope. There we go. Yeah. Oh, poor dragon. And then wait for Pop it. Up again and wait for it. Yes. Straight out of Dark Crystal. And then how do we defeat him? We dance. We we rap punch. We rap punch. I mean that's together. how that's how I have gotten away from bullies oh, my entire life. That was wonderful. So that's that's. I mean you know. I, f- I found this one as well. This one was in my notes as well. Mm-hmm. This is a good one. And I remember a few weeks ago looking at it and being like, oh my gosh, so awful, blah, 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 blah. But today in this context, yeah. I'm in love with it. Oh, yeah. And like I said, I watched it. Like, and it's even catchy. Like I watched one that had the subtitles and what's it actually saying. <laughs> yeah. But I was like, I would be walking around work going like, hey, 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 good uh-huh. Like it just it's it's like a brain worm. It oh, gets in there good. and it just stays I guess in that's there. That's the point. I guess um, that's the point. And uh you'll see in the anytime there's a puppet anything, I am a huge fan <laughs> of. Like if you put puppetry into anything, I'm already gonna be there. Yeah. And obviously some trickery over there with the photography, but that was probably more of a smaller size sure, normal sure. puppet and they make him look huge. Um I saw an optical fireball in there. That mm-hmm. was kind of fun. So what is the Famicom? I'm not a super uh, Nintendo oh my goodness. knowledgeable person. Oh my goodness. Was that like just well, the, fa- in Japan? the Famicom is yeah. well the Famicom is the Nintendo. Okay. Nintendo made the Famicom, the family computer. Okay. And that's oh. what we call the Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, okay. Ooh. And then so th- then the Super Nintendo Entertainment System is uh, this came su- out, but before that in in Japan, of course, it was the Super Famicom. Okay. So then they just called them Nintendo in the States and in Japan it's called the Famicom? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, Nintendo's the company. Yeah. And really, really for us to call these things Nintendo, like the Nintendo Entertainment System, that's yeah. its name, is the Nintendo Entertainment System. So Nintendo's almost a adjective, I think, or no, an ad- adjective at that sure. point. Um, and they did that because the, an entertainment system, they didn't want to call it a video game or anything like that because that was when we were kind of going through the Atari was crashing. Okay. It was through the video game crunch. Um, even Family Computer was like a little bit more upscale. Okay. So Super Famicom's the Super Nintendo. I did. Even for us to call it the Super Nintendo isn't quite accurate. It's the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Super Nintendo SNES. Entertainment System. SNES. 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 All right. So I'm going to load up. Um, well, do we want to say anything else about this? So this is this is. In, I mean, it's a little harder for us to speak to this one because it was it was in the '90s in yeah. Japan, and we maybe we we were probably, as we were joking earlier, you know, flinging snot balls at each other over yeah, in yeah, America. Yeah. Well, the one thing I noticed, a couple of these, whenever it's, there is like one reoccurring character who I don't know who it is. It's okay. a large mustachioed man okay. that's usually like, he's not in the front, but he's close enough in the front that you notice him. Like in two or three, whenever there's like a group, yep. he is always present. So I was going to like start up by asking, is this like a popular person or well i actually i'm happy to talk about that and okay. actually this is a moment i feel like we're almost going back to that episode that you joined me on of course well, i'm from always a gonna new, have questions question from a news elephant which i'm pleased with um so in this commercial that is link's um uncle and link's uncle wakes him up in the beginning of the game and goes out to 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 battle and actually <laughs> is defeated sure um everyone in link's family just Gets the yeah, and he gives Link the sword. He's the character that w- that wakes him up in the beginning, wakes him up out of bed or whatever. Okay, and that a uh, very similar character also happens in Link's Awakening. Okay, uh, he's not his uncle, but it's it's always that kind of like pseudo Mario ish looking uh, yeah, character. Okay, you know, um, in Ocarina of Time, um, oh my gosh, I just forgot his name. If Talon, Marin, Malin, is it the guy from the ranch? There's a guy in the ranch yeah, a, who has a pretty big mustache. Well, there's two of them. There's there's a there's a there's a kind of Mario character, and that's Marin's. So I'm getting I'm getting links of oh, all these names. It's been a while. It's been two months since our last episode. Um, anyway, yes, the the somewhat portly gentleman with a big mustache is never the same person. Okay, but that archetype. It, is common in a lot of the Zelda So is he games. supposed to be like a, a wink to Mario, though? Is that like... In Ocarina, like, he is. Okay. In Ocarina, he is. Because doesn't I, he also have a brother who tries to take over the ranch? And like he's a green taller, and, blue. and he's green. Okay. Yep. These are coming back to me now. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, 
So, so I was actually very happy that Link's uncle is very, re- you know, accurately represented in this commercial. Oh yeah, and you do learn spoiler alert, but I think it's a, a happy one that his uncle does not die at the end of Link to the Past. Hey. Uh, Kate and I learned in the season two finale when we f- completely played a Link to the Past. Very cool. And uh, one final thing, I just recently saw the I guess trailer, but these days com- commercial because sure. commercials don't really exist anymore. What do you want to call them? Um, the trailer for the uh, Super Nintendo, or I think it's called Super Nintendo Land at the Universal Studios Japan Ooh, Park. You know? Yes, yes, yes. They yes. just released like a concept trailer. And I'll be danged, it's people running around doing group dances. I'm telling you, it's all the rage. Like, we're going to go 50 years in the future and people will still be doing group dances to celebrate things. Yeah. It's just yeah. tried and true. I, it, especially the rap punching at the end of this one really mm-hmm. made me think about some of the thing. I mean it's a fun trailer to watch yeah. it's very conceptual it doesn't really show you any real things of what that park's gonna be but it, that, it was that same like towards the end let's get together and all do the same moves so and going through these I also knew, there's a lot of rap based ones <laughs> no like and I don't know if that was just Nintendo trying to buy into the times you know like, I mean let's face it like trying to be cool trying in the to 90s. be cool and that was like that's what it was but like yeah. I think there was like three or four ones that were like different degrees of rap but all yes. of them had a very uh do you want to stay on this rap chain and go to the nerd and the cool guy one? Oh my god, which one is that? Hold on, let me... Where is it on your tabs? Yeah. It's uh... Not this one. He's pulling it up. I think it was one of your earlier tabs when we were doing the behind the scenes stuff. Is this one? Here it is. It's this one. Okay, so this is... <laughs> this is this, this is, is the greatest. Yeah, this is for original Legend of Zelda. Nothing beats this. And frankly, it's more like mid to late 80s is mm-hmm. when this one came out in America. Yeah, this is an American one. Yep. All right, let's watch. And listen, and listen, because... How about this? Let's You and I be quiet for this one. Okay. Let's let it play, let the audio play, and then we'll talk about it. Because there's the audio is so rewarding, rewardingly disastrous. Hold on to your socks. Here we go. Did you see the latest Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. <laughs> you mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. Ugh. <sighs> It's the Legend of Zelda, and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ganon are pretty bad. Octoroks and Tech Tech's levers, too. But with your help, our hero pulls through. Yeah, go, Link. Yeah, get Zelda. Awesome. Intense. The Nintendo Entertainment System. Everything. Your parents help you hook it up. Everything the about Zelda that is fantastic. I from, concur. From the young Colonel Sanders, who they got <laughs> as the boy, like it's just it, and watch it. It is literally a young Colonel Sanders, like to the wiki wiki noises, like some guy just making the sounds. Yeah, they didn't do real record scratches. Oh no, no, a human just goes wiki wiki wiki. Yeah. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. So let's describe what's going on here for our listeners a little bit. Okay. Well, it's uh, two two kids. Yeah. Uh, and, and in what I, appears to be a normal suburban and home. Let's, let's take it slow because the plot does get kind of complicated for this one. Oh, um, nice graphics. Yeah, I <laughs> can't wait to get my hands on it, man. <laughs> um, and then they just proceed to play the game. I don't know. Yeah. It's and it's it's screenshots. It, it's just... So, so like one nerd kid yeah. sits down to what is supposed to be like a cool kid yeah. on the couch. And the cool kid, it's based on the blocking of the ad, in my opinion. The okay. cool kid's kind of like the one playing yeah. Nintendo games. And the other guy's just but kind of... But the nerd kid is the one that actually in the brings background. Zelda over yeah. and says, what, you haven't played this? And then the cool kid subscribes to the nerd kid's recommendation and is so excited that he starts expressing his admiration for the game through a rap. A rap, yeah. Sometimes when I play video games, and I love them that much, just I free flow rap. Free flow It's, it's just, yeah. it, it's, it's part of me. It's who uh-huh. I am. Yeah, I you know. know, I know. It's, it's a real problem <laughs> When sometimes. people see me, they go like, that guy free flow raps all the time. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Putting my cereal in my bowl. I mean, I can't do it under pressure. I mean, I have to, I have to be absolutely alone with no one else hearing me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm putting my cereal. Hope I find an Oreo with a hole. That's how I, good it gets. I, uh, Oreo with a hole. Yeah, like in the middle. Sure. I was supposed to say like, Cheerio. Yeah. I was supposed to say Cheerio without a hole, but it came out Oreo. But now the idea of an pivot. Oreo with a hole, like a, a pivot. donut Oreo, sounds pretty Denorio. amazing. Oreo. Mm-hmm. Oreo. An Oreo nut. There it is. That's it, better. I like that. Oreo nut. Oreo nut. Like sounds it. like a character from Zelda. So, <laughs> so uh, yes, Legend of Zelda. That was that was. Um, it's just. So it's so dated. This is the one I was talking to. Not to interrupt you. I'm so sorry, but like, please. It's so had. This could only exist in late '80s, early '90s. Like, you know what's great about this? Has to exist in that. To a certain degree, I think this rap probably was cool at that time. Yeah, like, and if you can put yourself back then, Mm -hmm. like, 
you would have a friend who was a little bit maybe cooler than you, and you would bring over the game, but like, you got to try this, you know? It like, yeah, it's, they're, they're it doing have, broad strokes. They're going yeah, to the extremes here. It does have truth in it. It just dated itself so intensely that like, even well, in the mid '90s, you were like, "That's that's lame." That's yeah, that's lame. And it was probably a touch lame, even when it came out. It wasn't as cool as like what real rap or hip hop was doing. But mm -hmm. it's just it's like that thing. It's that it's that perfect example. Um, let's see. Let's do another one. Okay. And I think maybe we'll go to break, and then we'll come back with the. Uh, it looks like you got another six or seven here. Oh yeah. Um. So I think this is. I want to say this is one of the most bizarre. Is this the guy? I, I think the... this is the guy. Yeah. So. Um, we're just gonna be quiet for this one as well because he, like, there's really no describing it without actively hearing. I know a little bit of backstory about this one. Oh, I'm so excited because I didn't do any research yeah, hoping that you would know. Well, I just kind of know this through just being a Zelda fan. So, do you want to listen to it first and then you can go through it? Yes. Okay. Ready? I didn't know if I want the context there or not. Yeah, let's Watch do it. Zelda become a legend on your Nintendo Entertainment System. Zelda! Which way? No. Good guy. Zelda. 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 A never-ending adventure new Ooh, for your Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment, Entertainment System. System. Okay, so, um, is it going to keep playing? I think it's okay. Oh, yeah. Let's just cancel that. X that thing out. Um, Please tell me everything about this. I hope I'm not misinformed. I hope I'm not misinformed, but the, the legend goes about this commercial is that it was actually tremendously expensive to make. No. they This this was like an improv guy, some kind of like comedian that was popular or something like that, and he was expensive. And really what we're looking at is we're looking at a, a, a man who almost is dressed like a mime without the... You know, oh, yeah. He's, he's dressed like a, a black box theater, it's super artsy performer. Black and white, kind of like yeah. they want to make it very dramatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has very 90s hair. He has like the curly... The kind of Kind of the Kramer. Yeah, yeah that's a Kramer. good way of putting it. And he's speaking in a silly voice. And all he's doing is hollering out names yeah. of the bad guys. He's just in a room, like just two walls. And it's just him... It overly dramatically screaming out things that you then see on the screen. Yeah, and, like, and, and, and you're not informed that that's what no, it is? No. Nope. Nothing, nothing. And he's reacting like they're there for a little bit. Like, <laughs> right. it's, it's like, almost like, like, it's like a weird little drug trip that we're watching him go on, you know? Oh my God, you're it's, right. It's like We're he, watching this man go through trouble. Oh yeah, he is not having a good go of this. <laughs> uh, he's not having a good day. He's, this is, if your day ends up like this, Things went wrong on so many levels. <laughs> um, like, how does this get kids want to play this game? I don't know. And Maybe it's the silly voice. Yeah, it's it's like you can tell he's definitely like babying up his voice a little bit. Yeah, um, but just uh -huh. yeah, and then, and then looking quickly to the left, like ah, pee hats, like I just. <laughs> And I love the like so the some the post edit where like they make his little fr he rotates he's left yeah. right up down right, up, you know. down yeah. yeah 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 oh man alive I just I want to be can the director imagine? what. I mean, can you imagine being on set for this? Yeah, exactly. I, I want to be the director, and he's like, "Oh no, this is a really talented guy. He's a, he's a, he's fantastic. He's going to really sell this." And the guy comes out and just screams the names of the characters and monsters, and you're like, "Cut! I think that's it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. That was exactly what we needed." Now compare this to the production value of the Zelda rap that we saw for Super Nintendo in Japan. Like that, like money was spent on that. Oh one. yeah, that one was by by this but compared to what we just saw now was. Epic. Yeah. You know, the one with the puppet cannon, the oh, first yeah, yeah, one yeah, we yeah. watched? I almost want to, like, do some research and figure out who that guy is. Because if you said he's, like, supposed to be a famous, like, uh, 80s, 90s I comedian... I truly hope I'm not misinformed, but okay. I do believe that this is the truth. Because I... It doesn't look familiar. No, no, no. I'm, well, I mean, I think he was, like, art housey. Oh, okay. And Got and it. that's, like, they were like, oh, let's pull in this. We're going to be super cool. We're going to be super coffee shop. Like, okay. When coffee shops were still, like, a really kind of um, niche, cool thing in the early 90s. It does have that, like, you know espresso cigarette kind of feel to it you know just, or at least it was like trying to go in that direction yeah like yeah. the black and white very mm -hmm. art house but it just it comes out <laughs> absolute like you're like what is happening i feel like this guy um well, it's not the right time but like in between shots he probably sat down and just played zoop i am that's so, uh, that's a reference i don't understand it's all good it's all good what is zoop it's a it's a super coffee house puzzle game that came out actually in the early 90s okay which is phenomenal oh i'm not I'll, trying to I'll play it with you sometime i still to this day play it on my super nintendo it's great i even have the game boy version it's super cool but it's 
it feels like it belongs in a coffee house. See, I feel like during the, like, and they're like, cut, and he was just like, okay, I'm going back to my trailer. Like, oh, yeah, right, like right. he just is so, he's yeah. like, I am killing this, and like, <laughs> doesn't want to talk to anyone, is, when's craft services, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. I just, he has, he's, please, 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 everyone, go watch this trailer. You will not regret it. Out of all of them, yeah. watch this one. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, I hated watching this, but yes, you should watch it. It's just frustrating to look, to look at, in my opinion. Oh, I don't think it did a good job selling it. I am just fascinated Do you by think the trailer. Like their ideal was like, oh, kids will, kids will repeat the weird way of saying these things. They want kids to scream out, Octorok! Or, or maybe something. so many people didn't know how to pronounce them, so they finally just had a guy come in and just scream out the pronunciation of things. Dan McCoy. Because I am I am notoriously a bad pronouncer of anything in the Zelda world. I, I don't want to say what I'm going to say. Oh, no. Maybe we need to make a Breath of the Wild version of this commercial. I'm down. <laughs> and put it on our YouTube channel. I, I am 100% down. I, <laughs> I've, been in, <laughs> I've been always wanting to buy a black turtleneck. And I think now is the ideal time and reason for me to do it. Oh my goodness! Maybe, 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 maybe. I don't want to have a production <laughs> meeting here on the oh, show. Oh no! But, but we're we're gonna put that on the bulletin board. I wonder if we could get some of the other easy, like the blog writers and stuff. To help. I mean, this could be a horrible idea to yeah, re- remake I, some of these. I commercials. think the script will be really hard to come up with too. <laughs> <laughs> Lionel, <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited. I mean, Bacoblin. I mean, Bacoblin. Cut! I don't know what it is, David. It's just I'm going to my trailer. This is too hard. Tell me when craft service gets here. <laughs> oh, this is great. Okay, let us go to break. Okay. And um, uh, we'll come back. It looks like we've got maybe six or seven more. Huh? Okay, yeah. We'll go so we got a half an hour to do I think that. we did, I think I have one or two more silly ones. Yeah. Um, but then we really, I want to transition into some of the actual, I loved this advertisement for what it is and Ooh. for the way it sold it. So we're not just making fun. I yeah. like this. This is going to end I on a nice note. I tried to pepper note. some like silly, yeah, ha, ha, ha. You're but using, you know, there's some really honest good ones. I'm in starting now. to feel like you're using the Pixar formula here where it's like, you know, all fun and games for act one, act mm-hmm. two, a little bit of tension and act three, you hit with the solid material. Unless we're doing the up, in which case I would have had devastating <laughs> news to destroy you mentally and then pick you back increasingly up. Increasingly silly, actually. Mm-hmm. So. Actually, up gets sillier and sillier, it doesn't does. it? It does, yeah. To the point where he's like on a rope running around the side of that thing. Well, once you introduce the talking dog and the yeah, things are oh, just... I Squirrel. Loved it. I'm a Wally kid. Up was good, but yeah. forever and a day, Wally. Wally was a bit that way too, where the first act for me, I think, is like true art. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of really fantastic social... Uh, conversations mm-hmm. about the second half, but okay. I wish it was executed just a touch differently. But anyway. Anyways. Okay, so... Break so, <laughs> now we're going to start a Pixar podcast. <laughs> we're going to go to break. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you in, uh, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. Oh, wow. Hey, this is TC. And this is Jim from the Studio Demands It podcast. Where every episode we take a demand from a hypothetical studio. Which could be you. And challenge ourselves to conceptualize, pitch, and craft a film based on the stipulations. Or the demands. We are given. We talk about movies all the time. Particularly, we complain about the choices made in the films we've seen. We're nerds like that. And, of course, like any good nerd does, we automatically assume that we could do better. Even with the demands and restrictions that clearly must have been put on by a production. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com and listen to our previous library of episodes. Our library of previous episodes. Our precious library, Jim. <laughs> our library of precious episodes. <laughs> You're a pirate Smeagol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So head on over to studiodemandsit.com to listen to our library of episodes. And submit your demand for a future episode, too. So go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, end of ad. Hey everybody, David here. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to talk to you about some of the updates we have on our Patreon page. Now, as some of you know, we do have our three tiers, the sword tier, the white sword tier, and the magical sword tier. And we've been getting some really tremendous support over on Patreon. It's it's tr- truly amazing. And I want to tell you a little bit about some of our new rewards. So for starters, we've decided to add the wallpaper reward to our sword tier. This means that anyone who is a supporter on Patreon will get a special thing you on our website and they'll also receive the ability to download wallpapers once a month from our patreon page 
Now I make these wallpapers myself and it's a lot of fun. They come in a variation of screen sizes. I also make a phone version and an iPad version. I even make an Apple Watch version, which is kind of fun. Next we have our White Sword tier and that's staying pretty much the same. What the White Sword level will give you is early access to each of our episodes. Typically it's about a week before. Um, also advertisement free versions of those episodes. And I record a little Patreon specific intro before each one, just a touch of behind the scenes before we get into the episode. Also, of course, on the White Sword tier, we have our bonus content, which we release just little mini episodes every, oh, I don't know, every three or four normal episodes, we put a little mini episode in there. That will also be available on the private RSS link that you'll receive by becoming a White Sword member. And lastly, this is the big one. Our Magical Sword tier, Kate and I have decided to bring a camera with us into the studio, you could say, every single episode going forward after episode 17 of season two. So we just kind of set this camera up and we say a little quick intro to our Magical Sword patrons and we let them be there with us, so to speak, while we record the episode. I'm really excited about this because I've been wanting to give our Magical Sword supporters something really special, and I think this is a great way to do it. Okay, so that's it. You can go to patreon.com slash another Zelda podcast. You can also find links on our website to our Patreon page. We're so grateful for the support we've received already, and um, if you are interested in any of these rewards at all, please go check us out. Right, we are back from the break. Hello. It was a lovely break. We made some coffee. We did make coffee. We, we took a real break. It was a real we break. Made coffee. I'm for it. Um, we get to experience all this new music. Isn't this fun this season? We got I know. These new, this new uh, break music, new intro music. All oh, that's right. We're going to play the break music during this part. Special yes. thanks to Mikel. Yeah, he gave us permission to use his, his songs from his album Zelda and Chill. Hyrule and Chill. No, Zelda and Chill. Was it Chill? Oh, okay. D- Dan, get out of here. <laughs> and then just like that, goodbye, everyone. It was a good run. Um, you know, I had a great time, but I know when my time is due. And that was it. Oh, man. It'd be fun to meet up with him this season. I just yeah, thought about absolutely. this. Yeah, hmm. absolutely. Hmm. Gears are turning. So we, uh, we've, we're, doing, we're doing commercials. Yes. So You know what's so funny? I have this bad habit of... So I've been podcasting for like 15 years. And before that, I was tell. doing radio <laughs> and whatnot. Um, and the classic format is when you come in from a break, you remind the audience what you're, oh, yeah. what you're up to. Cause they just spent, you know, five minutes of listening to car commercials or sure, something, sure, right? Sure. But with podcasts or, or they've like switched or they've paused or they've whatever with a podcast, it's not really the case so much. Yeah. It's like, no, I, I clicked the file. Yeah. I know what I signed up for. It was literally two seconds ago. Like, yeah. <laughs> I have not forgotten what we so, were doing. Yeah, like here we are talking about Zelda commercials. It's like, no, no, no one's tuning in right now. Yeah. No one came in for the second half of this. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Exactly. Previously on yeah. the Zelda podcast. <laughs> we should do, oh, we should do previously. That'd be funny because it wouldn't ma- matter. Um, no. You know, there's a there's a podcast out there called Tandem Legends that I enjoy. Sure, they're like um, they kind of started around the same time we did. I okay. consider them friends. Uh, we, we never met or anything, but um, they are playing the games in chronological order. Ugh. So they do do like a previously on Tandem Legends, and they kind of talk ah. about what they talked last time. That would be so like ridiculous to do it on this show because it would be no connection. Like previously yeah. on Celebrate, we talked about top ten weapons. <laughs> And just do like the top three to yeah. just be like, hey, and previously on Zelda podcast, we, got, we think the weapon boulder thing is the best. Oh, Moving man. on. If I could get an editor to do dramatic trailers of promos of the of the previous thing, like grab a couple sound bites from each episode. Anyway, anyways. Anyway. You love that idea. Okay. Um, so just to remind people of what we were doing. Hyster- we're reminding ourselves because yeah. it's been 10 minutes. We were making our beverages. All right. So um, we went through some of the sillier ones. Yeah. Um, I do have one or two kind of still silly, but I do want to kind of move into some of my actual real favorites for a little yeah. bit, and then we can maybe dive back into the silly. I saw your end. list, and there's one in there that I completely agree with, still watch to this day, and sometimes eh, tear up a little bit. Certainly oh, did the first I mean, couple I think, times. Yeah, I think I, I, it's pretty easy to see. When that, um, so let's go <laughs> ahead and start with, you know, let's just knock it out. You want to do that one let's first? So well, Wait, what? You want to do that one first? Or you is, want the, to wait? is this the Breath of the Wild first look trailer? No. So that's the one that really got me excited. Which oh. one moved you? Oh, okay. Let's well, do we it. can do this. So let's no, do please. that one. So no, no, no. Let's. I want to. Wait. I, wanna, I'm I don't have a Breath of the Wild the first one. What do you have? No, I don't have that one on you. Well, let's go to what we're talking about then. Maybe we're talking about the same thing. Maybe we're not. So the one that I think every I like. I you know I was doing my deep dive. I ran. I came across these and I remember them, but I just like like had a oh. 
oh. moment, you know? And that Ooh, is... Is this Ocarina Nostalgia No, this is the Robin Williams with oh, his daughter Zelda yes, yes, um, yes, yes. series of ads that they put out. Yeah, these were very sweet. They, they were. And for people who don't know, Robin Williams had a daughter named Zelda. Um, she is named after mm-hmm. Zelda from the game. Yep. Um, as some of them, and there's a bunch of them they did. Um, yeah, it was a series. Yeah, and so they tell the story about why she's named that way. But, you know, Robin Williams will always, and I think a lot of people always be, have a special place in their hearts. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's most of our childhood from everything he's done. And he just seems so honest and candid. And he's not super silly. He's not making voices. It's just amazing to see. In these commercials specifically. Yeah, yeah in right, these commercials. Yeah. Just to see him like talk about something that's very dear to him. Yeah. You know, and his daughter's there too. I mean, of course he loves his daughter, but right. like, it's just whenever you can take a celebrity that is so loved and have them convey their love for something, I think it just reaches a new level. I agree. This was at a time, I think this was to promote, it's been a while since I've seen these. I think this was to promote the Ocarina 3D re-release on mm-hmm. the 3DS, Yeah, which I'm in the middle of playing right now and I'm enjoying it very much. Um, and if I remember correctly, it, it was always true that Robin Williams's daughter was named after the Zelda of the Legend of Zelda, mm-hmm. and the Legend of Zelda was named after Zelda Fitzgerald or something like that. Sure. There's a whole chain there, but um, anyway, I I kind of remember it. It hit the zeitgeist about a year before this this Ocarina game came out. Okay, he started maybe speaking about it on t- talk shows. I don't remember exactly how it came out, but it kind of beca- started to become common knowledge. Maybe his daughter just hit an age yeah. where she was now kind of a teenager and she had a little bit of a voice yeah. maybe in social media or whatever it was. But I remember it kind of becoming, not common knowledge, but becoming knowledge. Yeah. And then Nintendo kind of caught wind of that. Mm-hmm. And I'm so, I want what I want to say is I'm so pleased that, I mean, I'm sure their marketing team and marketing teams have to do really challenging and brilliant things to figure out how to get things to communicate uh, to to the audience. Yep. I'm so pleased that they, I'm sure, picked up on this little tidbit of info. I feel like they didn't exploit it. Oh no! You know, imagine that phone call, like, "Hey, Robin, yeah, great, yeah, we, we yeah, remember how Disney gave you such a hard time with the genie? Yeah, we love uh, you and your daughter, yeah. so we're gonna exploit that, and yeah. can we like get you on these commercials? Can you do a voice? Can you like? Right. And, I mean, and they didn't go that route. They just no. let it be real. Yeah, and that's another or at least thing. Or at least presented as real. And and also like he is, I wouldn't say the star, but like Zelda, his daughter is in there. You know, right. it's not like she's just in the background as like a prop. Like, look what. I named after this video game. It's, it's like, yeah. look how this game has influenced my family. And then they, they I guess they still play the Zelda games together. And it, I, I, this is the one I think if I had to honestly pick a top, this would probably be either one or two. Cool. So do you want to go play one of them? Yeah. Okay. I know they had like, and these were, and also this is cool because these were still legitimate commercial spots. These hit television. Yep. The first time I saw you, I knew we'd be linked forever. Yeah, this is super cool. For you, I traveled to the four corners of the world. I faced adversity. I became a hero. Dad. I saved your kingdom. Dad. Yes, Zelda? Are you mixing me up with the princess again? Hard to say. You're both pretty magical. (laughs) Love it. App, like, just... Yeah. And it's it's not like it's a new game. Uh Uh-oh. And it's not like it's a new game, so Uh they have to, like throw in clips and you know and they still and do a little it. though yeah but it's a nostalgic thing yeah and i thought it was very artfully done where he's speaking in the first person mm-hmm. and you it's, it's such a recognizable voice oh yeah and um but we're still seeing some clips of link and zelda in game yeah yeah, yeah. and it's just really See, sweet that way yeah I, it's just it's poetic sweet, in a way and it's it's yeah it's so nostalgia wrapped with robin williams and you know the game because now it's 3ds so it's years and years after you've played it you know because it's the third diff- it's a third platform that they've put it out for, right? I think they brought it out for so. GameCube, and now it's for 3DS. Well, like yeah, they, you're, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it like technically this, was re-released like the Skyrim of the uh, oh. Zelda games. Every time there's a new... This was a remake mm-hmm. where it was actually it was original code, and then Grezzo, the team that worked on it, did basically like a graphics patch and then yeah. a few other things. It was the original source code, whereas the one that on GameCube was just essentially a, a copy-paste port. Yeah. But nevertheless, I, I hear you, and you're absolutely right. Fun fact that most of our listeners probably know, Grezzo, the team that did the Ocarina remake and then went on to do the Majora's Mask remake for 3DS, they were the ones that also did the Link's Awakening for Switch remake. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. so that's kind of a neat little uh, channel there. 
So yeah, this one just this is this is the one that hits home, especially with the untimely, you know, yeah. kind of thing. Um, with did you hear our cousin. episode? I don't know if you've listened to every single Zelda, uh, another Zelda podcast episode, but we did one where it was favorite NPCs, and in the second half, uh, Kate and I talked about the the kind of hidden Robin Williams that's in Breath of the Wild. Do you no, know about I didn't. This? No, no, no. Ooh, I know you're. I know you're kind of like you're kind of in the DLC right now. I am of Breath I'm of the Wild. Around. And I think you and I might be putting together like either a Trial of the Sword episode or maybe a DLC episode. But if I can remember exactly where this character is, there's an NPC. It's near one of the horse stables. Mm. And it is the likeness of Robin Williams. When Nintendo, when people noticed this, um, you know, everybody asked, started you know, on social or whatever, yep. started asking Nintendo, like, is that Robin? And basically their answer was, and I'm paraphrasing, hi, highly paraphrasing, but their basic answer was... Um, we're we are touched and honored by Robin's uh, love for Zelda. They couldn't say it's him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and and maybe it was even like legal reasons and just out of respect. But like we know that there's this Easter egg in there where one of the NPCs. It, I mean, it's it's him. It's him. I mean, it's so is it just a likeness, or does he say anything that's kind of Robin Williamsy? Or no, there's no just... there's no dialogue about. I don't think there's like a further story. Like okay. there's also a me. There's a there's a. Um, uh, there's a few others in there that like have little stories of, of little cameos. Okay. I don't remember what, the, I'm pulling this out of nowhere. And sure. honestly, we go back into that episode where Kate and I talked about it at length. Yeah. Um, I'm still a little rusty. I'm two months rusty. We haven't been talking about Zelda for two months. Ungreasing those hinges. But anyway, anyways, anyways, I, I encourage you to find Robin Williams in Breath of the Wild. It's very sweet. I'm very excited about it. I had no idea. Um, so yeah, that is, like I said, that's going to be my number either one or two. Yeah. It's a, that was a, Touching commercial, a quick one. Obviously, you can tell it's still a commercial spot because mm-hmm. it's a quick 30 second. And I do remember there were maybe three different versions. Like, yeah, you know, he I mean, and his daughter were on set the same day. And they, yeah, there's a, there's a whole, and you can go to YouTube and you can go down the rabbit hole. There's like four or five of them, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I like that one. Beautiful. And he's got an amazing beard in that. Like, a bearded Robin Williams is like sometimes the best Robin Williams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. So, moving on. Uh huh. Now, the other one that I would put up there as my, um, like, one or two is going to be the most nostalgia, I think, ridden for me again. And it's going to be, I believe it is. This tab over here. This one right here. Oh, interesting. So this is, and, okay, so. I just read, I just, all I've read is Ocarina of Time U.S. commercial. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the original when Ocarina was coming out for 64. Okay. Um, and I remember, because here, we'll watch it first, and then we can talk okay. a little bit about it. Is that okay? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Really? Yeah. It's letterboxed. Oh, I think I do remember this. Because this hits, I, as everyone I think knows, I was never a big Zelda fan growing up. Right. This is the trailer that made me look at this franchise. Really. And it just, oh, it was so cool. The monsters coming out, the sword blade, the dragons. This is really cool. Or wolf thou suck. Like I, I just <laughs> because it, it's it's so majestic and it's so and you can hear it in the background with the music and it and then it just gets that little bit of like um, edginess to it with like yeah. or wolf thou suck. You yeah, know, like, like a little bit of that late nineties humor. The nineties like yeah. kind of sinks in there and like I just and you can watch it, like I'm watching it and just smiling like an idiot because I can just go back and remember going like. What what's Zelda? Like, oh my god, this is this really? seems like a game I need to know about. I like this. I you know, like because this. we didn't have uh, Nintendo growing up. We didn't have like well, we had a Super Nintendo, but we mostly were like a Mario Donkey Kong family. This was yeah. my introduction, and this is why I started playing Zelda, is because of this trailer right here. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think I do remember this trailer. I was a I had only played Link's Awakening before Ocarina came out. Mm-hmm. And I had pre-ordered Zelda 64, Ocarina of Time. Okay. And so I was very excited. So I think I was watching the trailers a lot. But this is interesting. This is that. So you see this, presume, you know, you see it on TV or something. You're like, what is that? 
I'd like to try that. And we know that I think some of the listeners who who were here for your episode of uh, favorite or questions from a yep. New Zelda fan, they I think they know that your story right now, even in this context as we sit here today, is you played Ocarina mm-hmm. and then kind of didn't really play then, too many Zelda games. Nope, didn't play Majora's Mask. Right, do but any of that in stuff. a way, Breath has brought you back a little bit. Yeah, oh, Breath is fantastic. And even then it took me a little bit to like... It's like, oh, it won Game of the Year. I was like, really? Like, mm. people are still into this whole Zelda thing? And then, <laughs> like, meeting you and, like, how much you love it. And then you're like, you got to try it. So then I got Switch, started playing. I'm like, and then just the universe just reopened up yeah. with everything that I've been missing out on all these yeah. years. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm excited. We're, we obviously have a couple other episodes this season planned where you and I will be speaking uh, together. Mm-hmm. And I, I enjoy this dynamic of of the new Zelda fan oh, dynamic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because there's still so much that I just, again, have no idea about. Right. Um, but I also remember these had the, it was, this was like an entire marketing campaign though, because oh. they had, I used to get Nintendo powers Yes, and they had the leaflet in there. Well, it's like, will thou soar or will thou soar? And I just oh, like, wow. the second I saw that, like, I was like, oh my gosh, I like every kind of memory of like getting excited about this game came right back to me, you know? So like, that's why, Ian, like I love the Robin Williams one, but this one is my. I got. I probably am going to put this as my number one. I see. I like that. I like that because you know. Let's let's compare the two for a second. Also, quickly, I don't think we've explained to the audio listeners exactly what we just saw. We basically just epic music, and it was oh, yeah. a lot of clips of mm-hmm. cutscenes yeah. mostly. So it was like the most epic moments of yeah. Ocarina of Time, the Dodongo, and the and yep. Vivalvia, Vivalvia, Vivalvia. I think I'm starting to lose the names. I got to get back into this. Um, or else you can end up like me, just butchering them every time, and then staring at you <laughs> well, until you correct me. Believe me, the, the the hundreds of times I've said Termania, it's, every time I listen back to season two, now, I'm like, Hylian, oh. Hylian, highly, highly. It's part of the journey. It's part of the journey of being a Zelda fan. Um, um, so for the 3DS Ocarina remake, we, as in culture, knew that game already. Yeah. Had known that game for 10, 15, 20 years. So those massive shots aren't going to do any, anything. Yeah, us. you almost yeah. don't need it. They did enough. And actually, I've just realized in that Robin Williams one, um, they did show some clips of the game, but those clips were informed by his voiceover. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, they added to, they added di- a dynamic to his voiceover. Oh, yeah. So here we have no voiceover, it just, just clips. Power, yeah. like ballad musical in the background, mm-hmm. like amazing orchestra. And remember, the graphics were really, really good. Like we look at it and we're like, oh, look how you know pixelated and yeah. the edges are all pointy and like, but like that was like, oh my gosh. And then like the big thing about Ocarina when it came out is that it had a, at the for the time a very robust dynamic light engine, mm-hmm. which means it could figure out that a light was a certain color and came from a certain direction. Oh, <laughs> cutting edge technology yeah. right there. Yeah, and so they would really have fun in those boss battles of like under lighting yeah. Link, and he'd be glowing green from well, below even and stuff. Like Navi flying around, you could see the shadow like yep. of Link's face go around. Exactly. So I, you know, I don't know if there's much to say about it, but like this one, it's it's it belongs in my heart. I this, like it. This game belongs in my heart, and this is my favorite out of them all. Maybe I uh, give a little bit to Robin Williams too, but this these two are, these are my my. I hear you. That's great. Let's keep going. A few okay. more tabs here. Yeah, we got. I don't a even more. know how far we are in on the second half. Let me take a look at the timer. Oh, we could talk. I, I mean, never started the timer, so we're probably fifteen minutes in. <laughs> sure. Now we could actually go to there. This didn't actually age very well, and we danced upon it a little earlier because Ooh. this is also the oh. one that said, um, "Will you save the girl, or will you play like one?" Yes. You know, so. It's like, Ugh. Wait, the same marketing campaign? Yeah, I actually have that one, and it's it's almost the exact same shot. It, just it's the text changes. So, um, so let's talk about that for a little bit because the the obvious conversation is you know culture continues, hopefully continues to advance and mature, and uh, um, the culture of video games. We've talked about this many times on this show. The the quick the broad strokes of the video game industry as a as an art form and as an entertainment form. Yeah. Um, it's 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 very very young. Yeah, uh, it's maybe forty years old, right? Sure. Thirty forty years old. I remember I've said this in season one. I remember going to film school here at Columbia in Chicago, and I remember like day one of of film appreciation one hundred and one or whatever. My teacher, my professor, had said something like, "You know, we're in a really interesting time because film is so young." No, this is twenty years ago. Sure. You know, video games. I mean, this is I guess around the time Ocarina's out. Um, not speaking to video games, he was saying, you know, film is one of our, it's still a, a maturing art form. Yeah. Compared to like literature, which has been yes. around since, you know, 
Dong Time. Exactly, or music or all these yeah. other things, right? It's a, it's a new language of art. And he said, oh, we're going to be a part of that experience. And yeah, we are. Okay, that's cool. But e- furthermore, even more exemplified is that that is you and I and all of the people listening to this show and everyone who's experiencing video games as a, as a maturing, growing art form right now, like, boy, we really get to observe oh, yeah. the growth. Oh, yeah. Because it's growing so quickly, too. I mean... Mm-hmm. Every uh, every two years, it feels like there's a new way to experience video game because VR's knocking on our door pretty soon. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising if, like, you know, in the next ten years, there's a VR Zelda game. You know? Yeah, I mean, I agree. And they're they're actually there. Con- it is. See, I knew you were gonna know about it. <laughs> but but it's pretty. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. You can play Breath of the Wild right now on the Labo VR headset in VR mode, and you do get Breath of the Wild. You could do this right now on your Switch. If you had the little cardboard thing, maybe we'll get it for the show. Um, and you can play it in 3D VR, but it's still third person. It's a little weird. You're okay. the you're the camera like looking oh, at diorama okay. link almost. Oh, okay. But anyways, so they, there's a quick little patch in in Zelda where you can play that way. But yeah, I know an, an actual like maybe it'd be like a Link's crossbow training for the Wii where you're actually in like these little things or whatever. Could be cool. Um, famously for Zelda, I spoke about this on our Zelda 64 episode. They originally tried Ocarina of Time in early in early early development. Um, Miyamoto and a few of the other creators thought, oh, let's make this first person. Ooh. And it was going to be a first person game, and they they thought, oh, it'll be so immersive. But what they learned is that actually, because of the graphics of the Nintendo 64 at the time, it was actually kind of boring. You're okay. really just looking at a bunch of blocks, and a, you know, like it was Minecraft more interesting to see. You know. Yeah, it was more interesting to see uh, an actual rendered Link. Yeah. So they did flirt with a first person. Later on, of course, the Metroid series went first person. Mm-hmm. A generation later, when there was enough fidelity in the graphics, yeah. where that could be interesting. And that was done by Retro. But um, 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 I digress. A growing industry. If we look at film, Maturing. this yeah. is where I was going to try to go with this, and you think about the early days of film where it was just a static camera and people putting a quarter into a Nickelodeon machine to just watch two guys box each yeah. other for 15 seconds, and then you grow to something like, um, what was it, Birth of a Nation, which is this super highly, by today's standards, completely racist, inappropriate film. Yeah. By that time standards or what the culture was at the time, it wasn't viewed as such, yeah. but it's this quote-unquote work of art for what it was at the time. And then we go on to things that are really beautifully created in, in this day and age and plenty of checkpoints along the way. Yeah. When you look at these commercials that say, like, will you p- save the girl or play like one, it's somewhere on that path to growth. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so if, I, by no means am I trying to make any kind of connection of Ocarina Time being birth of a nation, good Lord, no. <laughs> But this this kind of where was video game culture at the time? So it starts in the sixties and the seventies with a bunch of, quite frankly, guys at computers figuring things out, yeah. learning what video games even meant. That's the men. Yeah. That's the guys punching each other. Very much so in the Nickelodeon. Um, then as we grow, we're at a we're at a point now where we're one or two generations in. So people who grew up playing video games are now game designers, yep. and that's where it gets interesting. That's what that's what it takes. Yeah. So now we have. I can't speak to the the full representation of male to female ratios in the industry. I I dream and hope that it's growing and continuing to balance out. You get hints of it here and there. But certainly one of the things I'm most proud of with the Zelda franchise is that I feel that that kind of sensitivity and representation in Breath of the Wild compared to Ocarina, compared to Mm -hmm. the very first Legend of Zelda, where it was just go save the princess. You know, we spoke about how Sheik even was growth in Ocarina. Oh, without a doubt. You know? So that's all very interesting. Anyways, anyways, yeah. So, so, will you save the girl or play like one? Unfortunate by today's standards. Yeah, I think that's a very nineties very thing. Boys club nineties. Yeah, but yeah. So that's that one. Cool. And now let's jump over to one that I didn't like. One that I watched it. to the point where uh, I wanted to put on this list because start to finish, uh, I just wasn't a fan of. Yeah, there's a Majora's Mask one I don't like, but is that what this one is? No, this oh. is. And I'm I'm curious because I think you may like it. Ooh. But I just fight. It just okay, here we go. Ready? This is the, the is Wind this? Waker, a narrated commercial. What? So here we go. In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend. Okay. A legend held dearly by the royal family. I don't think I've seen this. That tells of a boy who became a man. He embarked on a great journey to the deepest, darkest corners of the earth. 
battling the forces of evil, testing the limits of his will, all to fulfill his destiny, which is above all else. To save me. Ugh. Okay, interesting, right? It's 2003 for the yeah, GameCube. 2003. I, I just, I, I don't know why. The second it started, I just was like, I'm out. Like, I don't, I don't know. For me, it was a disconjointed. Um, it was like it was gameplay. Yeah, like like the HUD was on the screen. The yeah, buttons yeah. were on the screen. Definitely they were showing what was happening. Gameplay yeah. mixed with. This kind of disparate, you yeah. know, B-roll of a person in a robe walking yeah. around. The narrator, you know. Um, and even I thought, because I watched it a couple of times, I, truly, I really tried to figure out why I didn't like this one. Yeah. And even the gameplay they showed was him just jumping. Like doing, yeah, yeah as doing like, stuff. And if you've played Wind Waker, it has so many amazing cinematic moments. And it's so dark. Like when I think of Wind Waker now, it's cartoony, it, it's, it's, it's cartoony yes, <gasps> but it's the bright ocean. It's the beautiful <sighs> boat. It's, it's how amazing and yes. bright and you know freeing it is and you watch this trailer and it's gloomy it's dark it's so it's no fun it's it's uh, you know i know that when nintendo released images and like demos of wind waker and yeah. it was this kind of cartoony art style especially after they had a real-time demo of a non-cartoony f- fight Nintendo's infamous for doing tech demos of Zelda games that never become Zelda games. Sure. I think every single system has had one, actually. Wow. Okay. Including the Switch. Um, Breath of the, there's, a Breath, there's a tech demo of Link fighting a spider that is, quote unquote, Breath of the Wild before Breath of the Wild was Breath of the Wild. Okay. And the art styles are always vastly different. Sure. Anyways, anyways, that's a whole other episode. Um, when this stuff was released, the gaming industry was very upset about the art style. Okay. Almost of backlash Waker. of the Wind Waker art style. Really? They wanted more realistic ocarina, which oh, is what we eventually got okay. with Twilight Princess. Sure, sure, and, sure. And I, I've said this many times on the show, and all of our listeners know this, but um, um, Twilight Princess was a direct response to that. that so you went way too cartoony, let's go way more realistic. They went back kind to basically, thing. let's go realistic ocarina. Got it. And that's what people wanted out of the GameCube. I actually think, I think Wind Waker did, is still very much a Zelda game and nailed it, especially in the first half of that game. I've said way too many times on this show. But I wonder if a commercial like this, they're going with the dark, moody stuff yeah. to try to bring that down a little bit and make it feel mature again. You know, Ooh, maybe, it's, okay, maybe there's sure. a marketing response where okay, they're like, I guess oh, sense. oh, we don't want to go cartoony. We still want to bring the teenagers in. Oh, how yeah. do we get the teenagers oh, to play? Yeah, let's try and sell girlfriend, a hot topic or something. Girl, you know? love, you know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm serious. Oh, no, I believe you. And just even the, the line in first, like, and the more important thing is to save May. I know. Well, and I was just like, I even, the first time I, I saw it, I even said, it's like, is it to save you? And she's like, it's to save me. I was like, okay. Like, I, I think even they're did trying that to go loud, for like, like a little twist at the end. They're like, oh, that's Zelda. And here's the thing that's really frustrating about that is in hindsight, okay, the second half of the game, Zelda gets frozen and you're saving her. But the truth is you're never really saving Zelda in Wind Waker. Link goes off on his adventure to save his sister. <gasps> you don't think that's his sister? I don't know. I mean, you don't. She never say- says Zelda. No. And she like I mean the most you see is just the bottom half of a face. That's that's yeah. 100% I think it's of it. super generic. I think they're trying to make it be that it's Zelda. Um, late, halfway through because Zelda is an active character in the game as Tetra. Okay. See, I have no idea about this. Oh, I, really? I I I turned on Wind Waker. Hmm. Uh, I did some stuff, and then you, and, and then I was like, and then one day I was like, oh, I'll come back later, and then just didn't. It might be worth you trying out sometime, maybe along our journey here of this show. But um, um, yeah, Zelda is has a chic esque character okay. from the top of that game. Okay, Link so you meet a meet character, Tetra and then she reveals she's Zelda. Or? She even learns she's Zelda. Oh, she has no idea. She doesn't even know. Oh, she kind of like has an inkling to certain things. But anyway, anyway, so. And then, unfortunately, then she gets frozen in a crystal, and then the second half of the game, you have to go save her. But the beginning part, she's this active. She's actually more active in the narrative than Link is okay. in the beginning. She's awesome. Tetra's 
awesome. Okay. Like, we needed more Tetra in that game. So, like, this this doesn't even line up with the yeah, trajectory of that I'm game. Yeah, I'm glad. See, because it, it has, a, like, a production style to it, and you can tell some money is spent on it. And I was like, oh. Some money was spent on one set for yeah. a girl to walk around Yeah, in. and I was like, I'm, I wonder if David's going to be like, oh, I really like the shadowing on this. But, no, I'm glad that you're on the same page, because this is, like, out of all of them, I just, I, like I said, I watched it a couple times. I'm like, why? So it's the early Do millennium. I think this is terrible. <laughs> it's early 2000s, and it was the time when they were doing, they were marketing the GameCube that it was, things were, things went from gross from the 90s, and in the millennium, everything needed to be kind of slick and a little dark. It had to be a little bit Matrix, a little bit Fight Club, a yep. little bit aesthetically. Yeah. Everything had to be really freaking cool. Yeah. Um, and so this is in that color palette aesthetically. It's oh yeah, that, it's, it's that definitely blue dark and blues, teals yeah. and, and everything steel. looks like a bruise, you know. <laughs> um, um, this is in that space, <laughs> and I remember the whole marketing campaign for GameCube because the GameCube, when even when it was released, they were like, "Here it is, it's a purple box." Yeah, and everybody was like, "What are you doing, Nintendo? What are you doing?" And so then the marketing quickly went to everything was silver and mm-hmm. glass. Yeah, and things had to be kind of weird. In the to back be cool. of the, ga- are you supposed to use that handle in the back like a handle? Like yeah, I don't think anyone I've does. It's never, not like you pick it up and take it with that's you. That's what I was thinking. I've seen it, and like I think I've seen one person hold it like that. I'm like, I'm not sure. That's so jumping I ship, actually though. have the game GameCube carrying case, and they got tremendously clever because the carrying case wraps around the GameCube, and the plastic handle GameCube sticks out of the case, and you use that to carry it. Okay. But I think that was more of a reaction than like part of the plan. They're okay. like, oh, let's let's have the handle of the thing be the handle of the case. Because it's just so awkward. And I was like, I've never seen anyone just like walking down the street carrying my GameCube. So they went with the smaller discs with the GameCube. Mm-hmm. Nintendo. I remember that. They yep. went with the little, those little tiny DVDs. And the whole idea was that this GameCube was the GameCube. This is a, this chunk of fun, this this cube of fun that you can take around with you it, wherever you want. It's supposed to be like, look how portable this thing is. Yes. Ha-ha. Yes. The thing is, you still got to carry that brick of a power yeah. thing with you. And you got to carry the All cords. your controllers, all yeah. your games. So... Yeah, so it never really went that way. But that's where the original marketing kind of was. And also, this is around the time that Apple had released their G4 Cube. Cubes were in, in the early 2000s. It was all very, like, let's go almost anti-design. Instead of having something be really curvy and look like a Corvette like the Nintendo 64, let's, box it up. let's just make it a cube. Box and that kind of became... And what's really interesting about the GameCube is it itself is not a cube. It's a... It's a, It's not a cube on all... You know, it's a square on the top, yeah. but then it's rectangles on the side. That's false advertising. Until Uh-oh. you connect the Game Boy Player, and, and mine over there behind us right now has the Game Boy Player connected to it. Once you ins- once you install the Game Boy Player, it is a true real cube. Ah, that's how, they get, cool. that's how, that's they, how get they get you. That's how they get you. That's how they get you. Oh yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wind Waker. We. Okay, so. Oh, we're gonna have some fun. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Whenever you see the Japanese on there, their commercials <laughs> are usually, and this is usually fun. They they are. They always have so much. It's so much lighter. I mean, even the dancing one was just uh, the rap. Was well, just, let me let me speak to that for a second. Throw it at me. Um, even when Super Mario Odyssey, blah, 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 when Super Mario Sunshine came out, it was hysterical because again, this early two thousands, okay. and everything in America had to be cool and. And, and, and not smiling and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. In the early 2000s. And so there's this classic example where the Japanese artwork for Mario, he's like, hey, hey! And, you know, with his little water Wait, pack on. how was it? You know, hey, hey! I don't okay, know. I, I, just, not, I don't I have a very good Mario. Sure. Yeah. Mario! I'm a more Luigi, actually, with my cold right now. Mario! Ah, oh, see, I've got my Luigi, but I don't, I don't have a good, good Mario. reverb, too. I mean, you got that little, like, you know, well, he's, well, he's nervous when he's in the dark, when he's in his uh, Mario. mansions. <laughs> Huh? I want to play those games. Anyways. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and then it's kind of hysterical because the American artwork, Mario's back is turned to you. He's looking oh, over yeah, his shoulder. And he's, and he's like, just like kind of slightly mad. grimacing. Yeah. yeah like he's a not die smiling. hard commercial, except it's, yeah. he's got a water jet and it's so, And that's, that kind of speaks to just even these commercials that we're watching right now. Take that pollution. So Link's Awakening, TV commercial. This is in 4.3. So this, do you think this is for the original Game Boy game? Uh, quite possibly. Um, you're going to be very excited about this one. Let's watch it. Yep. <laughs> Love it. See, there's that's again the guy with the. Oh, this is awesome. This is the opening sequence. I love it. He died. Yep. <laughs> yeah, this is, so, this is from the 80s. This is the original Game Boy. Ta-da! I love it. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's great. Yeah, hit there. We go. There we go. That's yeah. That's a lot of fun. Again, one hundred percent of the time, you add puppetry to anything, and I'm going to be a big fan of. Now, what's cute about this is I, zero gameplay. Yeah, shown. Uh, I think they showed the Game Boy with maybe some like, da -da -da -da, but not a full screen. Yeah, not a full yeah. screen because oh my word! If you were to show gameplay of this game back in the day of a Game Boy with that kind of pea soup green, oh yeah, three hundred pixels by three hundred pixel graphics. Yeah. I don't know if anybody would want to like sign up for no. that. You know what I mean? It'd be slightly nauseating is what it would be. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so they made a very clever choice here of just representing the game. And actually, I feel like these puppets, as they performed, kind of accurately depicted... They re First of all, the original shots we saw, the first couple shots of the commercial, uh, with air quotes, one for one, create the opening cinematic that happens on the Game Boy. Oh, okay. Uh, Link gets hit by lightning. He's, he gets Link in, himself gets hit by lightning? Well, Link's boat gets hit by lightning. Okay. He falls into the water. He washes up on shore. Marin, or Malin, I always swap the R's and the Definitely L's. Definitely not Mar Mario, though. Not Mario. I think it's Marin on that one. I think it's Marin for Link's Awakening. Um, she, she, there's a side shot. She wakes him up. The camera pulls up to, to reveal the, the big egg on the mountain and all okay. that stuff. And they kind of did that here. And then they went to him battling some skeletons and stuff. And sure. it, was all, it was all really cute. But there was no giant puppet whale that comes out of the egg. And I feel like that uh, well, I don't, was I, a missed opportunity. Well, I don't want those spoilers, man. Well, oh. This is the first time people were seeing this game. I think this is this is this is this commercial oh, we're looking true. at. I thought you were talking about spoilers for like them. I was like, I'm pretty sure oh. they know. Yeah, no, no. But I mean, like this is this is a commercial, a bit like that Ocarina one we watch, which is introducing the game to people. Got it. Okay, yeah. First, it's time. not reminding people of the game like the Robin Williams one. Copy. Yeah, that was just an absolute treat. Ugh. I almost want to rewatch. I love that it's a little bit. Um, it's a little bit. Of the dance thing, yeah, that happened in the Super and Nintendo, and it's got a little bit of a rap too. I yeah. mean, if you listen to the background, let's do it one more time. This is a quick one. Let's yeah. play it one more time. Just push space. I think we might do it. A little James Bond kind of feel to it. I wonder if these puppets are somewhere in a museum. <laughs> are those Mario's clompers? Or what are the chomper things? That chain chomp. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. There's a little bit of gameplay, teeny tiny on the screen. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. That's that's a lot of fun. Um, I'm trying to think of it as like an American market. We don't have a... We don't have a U.S. version of this, do we? A commercial? It's okay. Of puppetry? No, no, no. Like a Link's Awakening. Uh, oh, I have no idea. US. No, no, no. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This one. This one's a classic. That's yeah. a lot of fun. Let's keep on moving. Okay. What else do we got? I think I'm kind of running low. To be completely honest. Well, we're getting honest. towards the end of the episode. So here is the. We did that one. We won't do that one. Here is. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Are you ready? I, I brought this one in here specifically for you. So this is. So I think we're looking at the Breath of the Wild 2 Breath first look trailer. Yeah. Have you seen this yet? Dan. I okay, I don't know. I'm just I'm just making sure. <laughs> but like I, I I didn't put it on here just as a shameless promotion because how much I love Breath of the Wild. I genuinely liked yes. uh this trailer. This is a good trailer. Because uh and do you want to watch it first or do you want to talk about it? Let's um well let's talk about so let's I want to acknowledge one thing. Okay. We are now going to be is this other one also a trailer? Uh, n yeah, no, this one is, ah, I, I just put this one on there. I actually wanted to talk about this one just because I think it's a oh, wow, cheap rip off of something else. Oh, interesting. Let's do this first and then go to the trailer. Let's do this one yeah, first. Yeah. So okay. right, we're looking at right now, I see a title that says Legend of Zelda Nintendo Game Boy Advance commercial from 2001. So I'm yeah. sure this is, I haven't, I don't think I know what we're going to see right now. Yeah. Um, the Game Boy Advance, when it came out in the early 2000s, they re-released, it was before virtual consoles mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, and kind of even a little bit before the ROM community, which okay. I don't officially support. Buy your games. People <laughs> should pay money for their games. Um, um, th they put, uh, they re Nintendo released some of their classics on Game Boy Advance cartridges, and I'm guessing this is a commercial for that. Yeah. Let's watch this. And it's, yeah. It's in 4.3, so it's early 2000s. What? You think you're a okay, so trying to communicate mobility. Mm -hmm. Things in the light are not the same in the dark. Oh, that's cute. Help me. She's depending <laughs> on you. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda, a link to the past for Game Boy Advance, and now four can play. Next stop, Hyrule. So, it's simple. Everyone. 
But it has that. Um, it has that two thousand. Uh, like dark. Yeah, yeah, everything's yeah. Everything's high contrast. Yeah, yeah kind of but gritty because we're yeah. in the subway. Yeah. Uh, the reason I put it on here is, and I, I know you haven't been caught up with most movies. This is essentially the plot and opening scene to uh, Shazam. <laughs> like it's it's a kid gets in a subway. There's a mystic old man. He like everyone disappears, and I just remember going like, oh, well, I'm gonna have to do some research and see which one came up first. Uh, 2001 I, for this commercial because well, I, I, you know Billy Batson and the comics have have gone back a long way. Uh, you know, but I just I just remember going like, well, that's uh, this seems slightly familiar. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. Some of the things that they're logistically showing here is that. Well, this is before internet. I was about to say, like, oh, you don't need to be connected to internet, but isn't that hysterical? Yeah. You know, it's a Game Boy Advance, because you're in the subway, so you like don't have internet, quote unquote. Um, even though I've noticed here in Chicago, a lot of the cars have like um, their own antennas. Have you noticed that? I haven't. Anyways, so you, like, you can still get internet on the yeah. L, which is awesome. Uh, 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 but I, I like the claustrophobic kind of feel to this one, though. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Like, even, even when he appears by, in the train by himself with just the old man, it's still shot downward up. It, like yeah. it's still very very tight. Some you wide know? angles are in yeah, there. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I just wide I like angle, not wide shots. Yeah, yeah, sorry. yeah. Sorry. yeah but I, I liked it. You know, it's uh, and I I don't know what this actually means to the game. If there's any link, <laughs> gotta go. yeah. <laughs> well, so that, that old man okay. is basically probably one of these uh, Tala Harasa guys or whatever sure. they are, and that's kind of accurate. The whole Zelda needing to be saved. I think that that's, she that was pretty dang accurate. Randomly like shows up in that portal. You know. Yeah, she, yeah. She's like, "Sup? You're gonna save me? I'll see you." Yeah, she, that was a little creepy. She had like spider webs on her or something. I couldn't quite tell what was going on there. But yeah, so this was a release. Actually, so this is not, I thought that this was for, um, so it says Legend of Zelda in the title here. I thought this was going to be for their 8-bit re-releases. This is for when they released A Link to the Past to the Game Boy Advance and something that came along with Did you notice at the end of that commercial real quick, it said, now you can play with four players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a side game on that cartridge called Four Swords. Okay. It's one that we need to play. Um to responsibly talk, speak about on on this podcast, um, and then there was a GameCube sequel to that where you actually play with four Game Boy Advances up on the screen and stuff like that, which I hope we can get four people together to play sometime. I don't so know. So this was a larger release than just a remake, okay? Which is what probably facilitate or what probably uh, allowed them to have a slightly higher budget for the commercial here. Yeah, but I really I, I don't know because it, it had the parallel to Shazam, and I just actually out of all <laughs> yeah. of them, it, it it felt like these. I don't know. It looked a little better. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. So now let's go. So now we're going to the Breath of the Wild two first yeah. look trailer. Yeah, yeah. So this one I uh, I randomly stumbled upon. I didn't even know there was a trailer out. The what yeah. Dan? What I, I, Dan? Oh, okay, I'm not I'm not as hip and cool as you guys are. Um, so this trailer came out about six months ago. Okay, around the time that we uh, another Zelda podcast went to the video game summit. Okay, 2009 video game 2019 video game summit. Uh, we even uh, Kate and. It was the gal that did the tr the shrine, the shrine episodes with us. Sure, <gasps> I have no idea. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, I'm blinking. I'm so sorry. Um, anyway, yeah, moving on. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm sure she's amazing. Person on the show. Um, they spoke about the trailer, this trailer, mm -hmm. and also I, it's hard to talk about the Breath of the Wild two first look trailer without talking about the Breath of the Wild first okay. look trailer. Which is beautiful. Okay. And I think it's like a, a really well made trailer. We don't have to pull it up right now, but I kind of want to. Have sure. you seen it? No, I haven't seen it. Let's do it. Let's cut for real here. It's worth pulling up. Okay. And let's watch both of these. Because you've now, you came across the Breath of the Wild 2 trailer yeah. by accident. Yeah. yeah I'm yeah. so pleased you saw it organically, like in the oh, real yeah. world. Let's do okay, this. Let's do it. Probably just Breath of the Wild. Maybe first look trailer, Breath of the Wild trailer. There's a couple of them. Just type trailer. I think we'll get like there's there's three of them, and in fact I think. Presentation trailer 2020. This one. It's three minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right, we're back. Um, we so I, a slight disclaimer actually. There is a Breath of the Wild first look trailer that happened. It was basically all a cinematic. Okay. And it just revealed to people kind of. The art style and yeah. that kind of stuff. Or? And it had a, it was all cinematic where 
links on this horse and the thing attacks him and he pulls out a special arrow and all that kind of stuff and nobody sure. knew anything. I do feel that spiritually that trailer might be closer to this Breath of the Wild 2 uh, first look, whereas like the Breath of the Wild 2 isn't showing us any gameplay yet or anything. No, 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 no. You excited? I'm excited. I haven't seen this. So this is brand new for me. So this You've was the fr- seen this, this like trailer. Times. I've watched it many times. I got. A, it's not going to happen to you here in this episode, I'm sure, because of the context. But I got misty the first couple times really? I watched this. Oh wow! Okay. Because I was so moved by where Nintendo was going with Breath of the Wild and what they were doing, going back to their roots and all that Straight kind of stuff. Straight up, full screen that. Yeah. Um, so this is the first real trailer, not the first look trailer. The okay. first real trailer for Breath of the Wild, when people really didn't know what to expect yet at all. They didn't okay. know what creatures were going to look like. This is the first time we saw anything. I believe if this is the correct one queued up. This is when we didn't know anything about Breath of the Wild. Here we go. Open your eyes. Oh. Like people had heard it might be open world, but they didn't even know yet. Oh, so this is like an introduction to the art style. This is like an introduction to everything. everything. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, this is gorgeous. Is this cool? I mean, if you had no idea what Zelda was going to... I know. What the next step would be. This is a fantastic first one. Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. didn't even know climbing would be a thing. Oh, that's pretty legit. I didn't even know you could do that in the game, to be honest. Oh, I do remember people were talking about, like, you could, like, catch the grass on fire, and that was a big deal. Mm-hmm. So there's really showing all the systems here, but they're still kind of keeping it beautiful, quote-unquote. Mm-hmm. even though it's action-packed at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was going to ask, so some of these shots... Yeah. Do they have to create... Oh, wait, here we go. Oh, maybe not quite yet. Okay. The the end shot means a lot. Okay. This was the name reveal right here. Breath of the Wild. Ooh. They show that Master Sword at the end. It's just wonderfully done, in my opinion. Um, seeing that Master Sword means a lot to a Zelda fan. Okay. You know, in that moment. And a clever little thing is when they fade to the logo, the sword doesn't move. Oh, either, yeah, yeah. Just the you know, it's kind of cute. Yeah. yeah, I liked it. So, anyways, um, when I remember when, when that robot came up and it went Funk, and then just showed the sword i was the first time i watched it i honestly was like oh, oh. <laughs> it meant a lot now i would say that I'm, I'm really glad that we watched the first one because i feel like the second one has a completely different like feel to it they don't have to really introduce the world anymore and, you know it's already established because everyone's played it but no oh. what are we typing in no no keep going keep going oh no and so when we watched the second one i just loved that it feels like a horror game. Yes. I, I love the the terror, like, and like, especially with how beautiful and how tranquil and look at him riding through. This one's like, 
oh, stuff's scary now. Like, we're done with all that time to be, you need to be scared now. So many people are making the comparison that, um, we're going to hold for the ad. I'm cutting all this out. Sure. Eat at Wendy's. The Big Bacon Burger is back. Because sometimes the best thing for meat is more meat. <laughs> See your doctor. <laughs> so the um, I do I do um, so yes. Uh, ma- many people are making the comparison it, that if Breath of the Wild is Ocarina, Breath of the Wild Two might be Majora's, Majora's Mask. Mask. Yeah, just because it's. Yeah. I mean, I watched it and I was like, oh hey, you know, I was just like again on my. I was like, oh the second one, I haven't seen this one yet. Okay, and I'm just like, no, okay tremendously okay. exciting oh very exciting tremendously yeah. exciting that ganondorf is that creature that's ganondorf's corpse from twilight princess get out yeah it's the same ganondorf oh it's there's so much in that thing we'll talk about it in a second okay. this is almost maybe supposed to be a bonus episode at this point okay but let's do this and that's why i wanted to save it to the we, end because we almost like, can't not um yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this. I, I, I actually, I know we're dragging the episode out a little bit longer, but I'm happy to do this. I think it's important. I did. I couldn't resist showing you that first real trailer. Sure, sure, sure. But this is the Breath of the Wild first look trailer. Okay. Which I think is more ana- analogous or uh, in parallel with the first Breath of the Wild 2 okay. trailer. First look. So here we go. This is how Breath of the Wild was conceptually introduced without gameplay. We kind of watched the gameplay one a little bit. I think. Legend of Zelda. Well, so, I don't think this is, I don't know if this is part of it. Okay, nope. here we go. Oy, oy, oy. Yes, I remember this. They presented it. I'm fast forwarding right now. He's, he's talking about how it's all in the wild. And there's breath. There's a lot of breath in it mm-hmm. too. Um, pardon me. Pardon my sniffles. So he's talking about it. And I remember the trailer is really actually kind of short right at the end. Here we go. So this is really how they, here we go. It would really start here. And this is first look, first look? Ever, ever, ever. Ever, ever, ever. Oh, oh. See how it's all basically cinematic, it's not gameplay, but. Tokyo drifted that horse. Mm -hmm. <gasps> right in your eyeball. Oh. And that was it. Nice. Okay. So, I feel like that's closer to maybe this Breath of the Wild 2 one. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, with yeah, like yeah. Cinematic and whatever. So let's do Breath of the Wild 2. Okay, I'm very excited about this. I only watched it once because I liked it so much. Ooh. I wanted to wait till we watched it again uh, with you. So... Okay, so I want to give you some heads up then. A lot of our listeners already know this. People have analyzed this trailer like oh, crazy. Oh, shot for shot. Yeah, I'm without I've a doubt. I've watched many videos that analyze it. Um, it's deduced that, th- so the green stuff is 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 like, okay, malice and energy, whatever. Um, basically, what we're f- what is what the community is thinking right now is that that is Ganondorf's mummified corpse. D- yes. thousand years old. It's sure. the same Ganondorf. If you look at all the jewelry on it, yeah. it's the same Ganondorf from Twilight Princess. Okay. Um, He's prob- all of this is probably under Hyrule Castle. Oh yeah, there's definitely a scene where you the see castle like lifts. Yeah. So we're in the same world for Breath of the Wild 2. It's going in fact that Hyrule map might still be there. Hopefully they expand on it a little bit. Oh, or yeah. Who knows what. Um so, you know, the big thing in Breath of the Wild 1 is like, well, where was Ganon? Ganondorf yeah. really? He's not really present. He's, he's kind of just this force of nature thing at the end. Yeah. So where's his body? He's been under the castle this whole time. What you don't know is it's the Hyrulean shield. If he would have dug just like an inch or two deeper, <laughs> that's where Ganon, like, wouldn't that be great if you'd never take the Hyrulean shield out? Like, it's like he just, that, that's what's containing him the entire time. Remember, like, uh, with Ocarina of Time, yes. you pull the sword out and he gets released. It's like, yes. you had to get that sword or shield, didn't you? <laughs> just had to ruin it for everyone. Okay. I love it. So you've only seen this once. Okay, so see, these Ooh. are the sea worms. Yeah, they are spelling actual Gerudo text there. Do they actually have a language? Like and this is Malice down here, this red and black stuff. Okay. Yeah, there is a language. This music being played reverse. When you yeah, reverse I, it, it's a song. It's like the Zelda song. And this is uh, this is uh, Mummy, Mummy Ganon, right? Yep. Got a haircut. And it sure looks like 
That's the mouse from the first game. Mm -hmm. Looks like it's getting the thing. I'm a big fan of like elephants too. So the fact that we're just hanging out on a giant elephant is pretty awesome. Yeah, there's a thought about that. So here it is. That's that is Ganondorf. There's and there's that hand's holding so, him down. I think. So yeah, what's the hand, oh, who's pulling him back up then? We don't know. This oh, just the seed. That's it. I'm down. Man, I love and it this. Just just slowly. It just. Yep. Like that, like... Isn't that cool? Oh, and we know cool. that map. Like, we know where we are. Yeah. And then, oh. And we're going to space. <laughs> and that's it. So, if we're introducing the idea of Twilight Princess, yeah. doesn't that also possibly introduce the entire Twilight Realm? So, it might. Some people like, are making connections that that big green hand is very similar to the big orange hand that uh, Midna, Midna has. Oh, I know. Bringing well, I Midna in already. Well, I don't know if they're going to go Twilight with it, but I think that that hand, that green hand, is yeah. holding him down or back or something like that. I don't think it's p pulling him up and giving him life. I think it's I, holding him at bay. Okay. And I think that. Well, I think if you. I, I don't know. I think I tend to disagree. Oh, yeah, I very can, much think that is giving, giving its the energy source. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, because yeah. Because like, and then he like I think if you watch it like there are part right where his eyes open up like definitely an explosion happens from the hand to it. That's a good point. So that's a good point. So we're gonna have Ganondorf for realsies. Okay. In Breath of the Wild two. Um, I think this is really cool because if it if it means any larger themes, Breath of the Wild was all about allowing Zelda to be reinvented if it needed to be. Yeah. So like all these extra new mechanics, the fact that we didn't have traditional dungeons and stuff mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The whole point of Breath of the Wild was to like, well, let's see where we can go. Let's not be held back because honestly, Skyward Sword's a nice game, but it was so much in the mold. And even Twilight Princess is so much in the mold yep. of what a Zelda game needed to be. Yeah. You could almost just X, Y, Z, make check a map the through the yep, entire check game. The boxes they go on. Right. So Breath of the Wild obviously was the opposite of that. Now that we've established this Breath of the Wild language, I'll yeah. say, language of gaming, it'd be fun to bring some of the Zelda-ness back. Well, not only that, for how popular the Breath of the Wild was, I mean, maybe now they can flex some other... Because they definitely took some creative... Uh, changes with this one so now that it did so well maybe Being they're like, breath of the wild 2 yeah, or breath of the wild breath of the wild 1 yeah, yeah yeah and so they're like well people seem to like it let's see like maybe maybe flex this a little bit and i don't yeah. don't well, know exactly anuma, what they would flex anuma but. announced that he's very pleased with the engine and okay. he wants the the next couple games certainly the next one to still use the same engine okay or at least you know style of play so they are copy pasting so to speak that engine, which a is bit fine. like Majora's was Ocarina's engine, yeah. and the rest, and technically Twilight Princess is Wind Waker's engine, but we don't have to get into it. Um, so I don't know. Could the next, you know, like we're still it? It's what I love about this is I can't wait to go back to the world. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. And that final shot even confirms we will literally be it, it, to some degree in that we're going to home. We're going back to yeah, yeah. that area well, that we've been I mean, running around it, in. I don't know, because sometimes you get these things and that may be just the opening cut scene. <laughs> and everything gets destroyed. Yeah, and <laughs> seriously, like yeah. it may, like the thing comes up, yeah. it may invert, flip back down, and then all of a sudden, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Because I get worried, not worried, that's not the right term, but when I see that and you're like, oh, it's the map, we, we know that map. I don't want to go back to that map. I'm done with that map. Yeah. I've beat that, I've been everywhere. Like, I need, I, I'm an explorer. I want something brand new. Okay. So that's... I mean, I, I definitely would like to go back to there, mm -hmm. but I, I I want so much. Well, I, I need a whole other yeah. realm to explore. I agree. I'm, I'd be excited about additional content as well. Yeah, and equally so. Like if they're gonna, if they already have the data built for that part, let's just say it's a little nitpicky, but let's say I want the same amount of data to be also then built around it and on top of it oh, or yeah. whatever. Like that equal amount of exploration, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, anyway, so that's Ganondorf for real. So what was your, your yeah, it was basically like, oh, we're going horror. Yeah, I loved it. I, I liked the, kind of, again, really kind of claustrophobic, darker music playing backwards. It was super creepy. You know, I don't know what any of Sanskrit is, but it's there. And just, she got a haircut. It looks nice on her. I know. Um, she's, hopefully she's going to be an active participant. Oh, yeah. I mean, she looks very paralleled to Link. Yes, I mean, I agree. You, you, if you swap the haircuts, <laughs> I think you could not really, and maybe the sword, you couldn't tell who's who, which is uh, fantastic. Um, yeah. Maybe a playable character. That would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I just, it just looks cool. Like, it, it just, like, it, it looks does. cool. And they don't necessarily call it Breath of the Wild 2. I think they call it the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Yeah. So we don't know what the name is. It okay. may not be Breath of the Wild Two. Yeah, you know. Well, are there any? Be. Are there any twos in There's the? There's one. Okay. And it's Zelda Two. Oh, okay. It's the, of, but the very first Zelda, Legend of Zelda, and then it's Zelda. I think it's technically the Adventures of Link, but I think it's like on the box, it's the Adventures of Link. 
but when you see it in charts yeah, and yeah. things, it's even in Nintendo, it's often referred to as Zelda, Zelda 2, 2 blah, 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 Adventures yeah. of Link. Um, Adventures and of so Link. when's it coming out? Uh, well, this was probably still a couple years away. I think, what did I say? What? It's just now in development. Uh, they usually have a four to five year turnaround cycle for these Zelda games. Every okay. four or five years, one will come out. Um, the most, I think there was like seven years in between a few of them. So, Ocar- seven years between Ocarina and A Link to the Past, I know. So what's the Zelda franchise giving us until then? Or are they well, just like, so the I know new, we just the got new, the Link's Awakening just came out a couple months ago. Yeah, the new president of Nintendo of America, who replaced Reggie, sure. um, has said he wants a Zelda game a year. He's okay. very he's going very Disney with it. Like, sure. oh, we want a movie of blah, blah, blah a year. However, that just means a Zelda game. Oh, not yeah. Like, you know, so we get our Link's Awakening remake. We get a... Hi- Hyrule, Some, Cadence of Hyrule. To, something to keep the franchise fire burning. And I like that. I like that because I, you know, I can I can play a Link's Awakening remake, hypothetically, for a year and be fine and then, yeah. you know, go back and play some of the old Zelda games and come back around. So, I mean, Breath of the Wild came out almost three years ago at this point. It's like a three-year-old game. Man, I had no idea. I know. And I just played it like six months ago. I know, I know. <laughs> a little behind. Even I played it a, a year or two late. Um, so... Maybe we're two years away. Maybe we're a year away. I know that they're, you know, there's a lot of, they're staying in the same engine. They don't have to build a sure. new engine. Yeah, yeah. That'll help. So we're not starting from scratch. I'm sure the story's already. Did you notice how Link got his hand like infected? I in didn't. The trailer? Yeah, he gets this weird green, the green thing. That's going to be probably a new mechanic. We don't know what that means yet. Hmm. But this is starting to become a Breath of the Wild 2 podcast. I was going to say, yeah. Instead of the TV commercials. So all in all, we got to get out of here. Um, TV commercials. What's your takeaway? We, you know, I just I can't help about thinking about the the Zelda television show as well and how that was so nineties. Yep. We'll do an episode on that. Where sure. We'll, oh yeah. Hey, I know that you like to watch television series. Never seen a television in my life. <laughs> I know that you because you, you come to me a lot. Like, hey, have you seen this series? Have you seen this? Series? And you always go like, Dan, I work all the time. I can't watch any of that. <laughs> I go, oh okay. <laughs> I think I told you that I haven't signed into my Netflix account you did. in about four months. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I was on it 10 minutes ago. <laughs> um, but what if a second half of the season, maybe a little bit later in this season, we sure. do a, a review episode of the Legend of Zelda TV show series? I You want to try it? I, it well, it's infamous, right? Yes. Isn't it just... It's not great. Okay, good. Okay, yeah. I was going to say, like, I hope you weren't like, I loved it because no, I've it's only actually, heard terrible things. Yeah, it's actually horrible. The only thing that's good about it is that it's actually surprisingly canonically accurate well at least they got something right yep all right well then i'm uh, super excited to do so that any any final thoughts about these commercials as you were no and, and like uh, not to bookend it but like i said i love that there's so much like the range of emotion like there's so many different people involved so you have the silly the serious you have the dramatic you have the not good you know you have the dated ones you have ones that like the robin williams one in 50 years that's still going to be just as I think, yeah. um, emotional, if you want to call it that. Like, uh, yeah. uh, you know, I just uh, the the wide berth of all of the advertisements. It's just I don't think you're going to find many franchises that can say that about their commercial advertising. I, there's not many franchises that have this many games. That's true. I get asked that all the time. They're like, "How do you do a podcast just on one game?" I was like, "Oh, oh, 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 oh. that's something I literally game. I probably asked. I was like, just 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 Zelda. Yeah. Oh, okay. I know. I know." Um, but anyways, yeah, so it also it becomes a really awesome lens for us to look through time. Oh, yeah. You know, and we'll, like an episode like this, we're able to see the difference of these commercials and how culture changes and time changes and preferences change. And By the end of this season, I want you to learn the um, the rap from the two kids. We'll do it. I think that should it's be... It's not that hard, I think. It was basically like, it's really rad that, because those guys are bad. I, I think that is word for word <laughs> some of the actual lyrics. Well, rad and bad, I think, might have we been We should recreate it. I'll put on my Colonel Sanders, okay. and then you can be the other guy. and I'll be, be the cool guy? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty cool. I'm so. not going to lie. I've been practicing my wiki wikis. Oh, good, good, so, good. Yeah, so I think, I think when we do come to that, I, it's going to be top tier wiki. Maybe we release these as like Instagram stories or something. I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Dan, thank you so much for helping me kick off season three. Not a problem. Always, 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 a, always pleasure. a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I can't wait to have you back around. Um, I, right now, we have Alyssa, sure. who was on our She's uh, fantastic. top 10 emotional storylines episode yep. last season. She and I are going to be discussing. Oh, my gosh. It's in the. Listen, there are. Zelda season three right now is like a zipper coming together. We okay. have a lot of teeth and a lot of pegs, a lot of ideas, a lot of people, and slowly it's, it's working all working its way out. It's been it's been a lot of work and it's a lot of fun, and I'm I'm looking forward to this season. It's a little stressful. It's exciting, um, but the next thing is it's going to be Alyssa, and I honestly can't remember <laughs> the topic is, but it's in but the spreadsheet. But it's going to be great. It's in the spreadsheet. It was her idea. Um, 
Yeah, no, I'm so sorry. I can't remember right now. There's because I just can't remember. But uh, and then we're also setting up a. I hope this comes together. We're setting up a trip to Minneapolis so that I can interview a very special guest. Ooh, um, I don't even know about this. This I is no, you don't. I know. Ooh. Uh, we, I've been messaging with him, a, and we're going to try to get an hour with this one guest. Is it Joaquin Phoenix? How did you know? Uh, no, no, this is not a not, not necessarily a Zelda <laughs> connection, but it is a guest who has other thoughts and has oh, other okay. things about Zelda that we're excited to get together with him. Um, is then, it Link's voice actor? No, but honestly, maybe we should start reaching out to these kinds of people and starting to see if we can get that kind of stuff. I have one little rule this season. As much as possible, I want to try to not do, quote unquote, Skype episodes. Sure. I will travel to people. Celeste lives down in New Orleans or Louisiana. I honestly am like, okay, fine. Then we're gonna, I'm going to go down there. We're going to record four episodes. That's awesome. I want to do it in person. Mm-hmm. And then we'll pepper them in through the season. So there's a lot of Knock like... Knock them out back to back to Shane back. lives up in Milwaukee. So we'll get together. We'll record three. And then we'll pepper them through... So it's a lot of work. It's it's great. It's really fantastic. It's been really fantastic to feel this support from this little Zelda family that we've built. Absolutely. To make this season happen. Very, very excited. All right, everybody. David uh, Geisler. You can find Dan nowhere on the internet. You don't no. have an Instagram or a yeah, Twitter no, or nothing. Nope. Sorry. I'm it's not my thing. That's all right. Perfectly fine. Uh, you can find me personally on the internet at Raptor Paint on Twitter or Instagram. And that's good enough. Um, the show, go to our website, anotherzeldapodcast.com, where you can find uh, links to all of our show notes for all of our episodes. And additionally, an ever-increasing library of blog posts. We have four or five uh, people that write blogs for us every single month. We have Ma- Mallory Coons, one of our newest. So I have this habit. I take super fans of the show, and I bring them into the family. And uh, if it, when people start to reach out a lot on social, it just... Like, and, and you hey, feel like... you want to write something? They might have yeah. some, I love some skills... So I reached out to Mallory. That's how we found Celeste. You know what I mean? Uh, that's how we found Shane and, and and even Carlos. Everybody, honestly. And we bring them in. And uh, oh, Lizzie, Lizzie, Lizzie Alstead yep. was the gal that did the episode with Kate. Oh, speaking about got Breath it. of the Wild too. Got it. Okay. Oh boy. So sorry. Thank you, Lizzie. Um, so yeah, there's blogs there on the site. You can go there. You can find the show at Another Zelda Pod on Twitter. Another Zelda Podcast on Instagram. And there it is. I'm tired. Yeah, you're doing great. Episode one, we got it. I loved it. I loved it. Very fun. Very fun. Uh, Dan, will work. We are planning an episode where we might have a special. I don't know. I don't know uh, this animal episode that yeah. you had an idea of where we might discuss. Oh, let's just do it. Let's just talk about it real quick. Okay. We are thinking of taking. You came to me and said, "What yeah, if yeah, we yeah. do animal physiology?" Yeah, because there's so many different creatures in the world, and some of them, you know, can only exist in like you know the fantasy realm, but like. What if, what what if we tried to bring them into the real world? Like, how would they exist? What would they be a lot like? So, like, uh, for example, the guy, uh, the, I don't know what he is, shoots things, like, pff, jumps out of the water. Pff. In some games, it's the Zoras. So, okay. Um, but there's, like, one that, like, it just has, like, a... Yeah, these, like, Deku things yeah, sometimes. Yeah, Deku. Like, how would that work in real life? Like, <laughs> is he, like, the kind of a catfish where he, like, collects things... Collects the these stones to stones, spin them? Or does he, like, create them, like, or create them, like a oyster like or a curl yeah, where yeah. he just eats stuff and then... Just, like, I don't know. It'd be kind of interesting to see how these... That might be something that we can reach out to our community where they can help us build a list of animals that they'd like us to critique. Mm-hmm. But then furthermore, I'm going to do my best to reach out to the Shedd Aquarium and maybe the Lincoln Park Zoo here in Chicago and see if we can get an expert or two to join us and see if they can rationalize what they know about... Yeah. Real world animals. Mm-hmm. If any of these creatures if could take be real, this person, or this animal combined to this animal, then like, we have something that may is be. Is it feasible? Yeah. And and, and most will... of the time it's gonna be like, no, that's <laughs> completely. Yeah. He's gonna sit there and be like, what do you think? He's like, that's impossible. <laughs> like, well, thanks. We'll see. Mark's we'll see. been here for two hours. <laughs> so we'll put that. We might be. That might be. That's gonna be a little bit later in the season. That'll be mid season. It's gonna yep. take a little while to get the guests put together for that. But anyway, thank you so much, everybody. We'll see you in two weeks with Alyssa talking about a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your love and support. Send your love to Kate. And uh, and uh, she is spiritually here with us. And there it is. Dan, thank you. Bye, everybody. Oh, we have to. Let's honor her. We have to say okay, bye. Okay. All right, All right everybody. We'll see you later. Uh, how do we do this? I don't know. We've never done this before. We've never I, had to do you're this. You're putting me right on the spot. Are we going to say okay, bye at the same time? How about this? You say it. Uh, it'll be whoever's opposite me has to say it. I'm Why don't you say okay right and I'll say bye? No, I'm going to say Dan. We'll see you later. See you next time. Okay. Okay, bye. That'll work. Okay. That'll work for so now. Just, just a simple okay, bye. Okay. <laughs>